scholarship to play video games. You're kidding. <laughs> and they require them to do, like, wait time and the, with the football players. I'm like, that's too freaking funny. Those guys are going to eat them guys up. <laughs> you have to do some type of wait <laughs> because we're on video games all day. <laughs> I guess I, they said other colleges are looking into it, but Ashland was one of the first ones, I guess. And this guy had some world renowned. We're up, title Mike. for games. We are live. <laughs> oh, and I gotta turn my volume. I guess. I think. There we go. Your volume now? Uh, it, yeah, they're all down. All right. I took care of that. All right, we're going then. All righty. Maybe. Maybe. There we go. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Thanks for joining us, RC After Hours, back in the Million Dollar Studio. Uh, been a couple weeks off here, but we're back, and it should be a good time. Thank you, everybody, for popping on here already this morning, joining us on Facebook Live. We have no guests today, which is kind of cool, so it's just us hanging out in the studio. Uh, everybody on Facebook Live, just uh, come hang out, join in with us, talk to us, give us some questions. We're all yours today, so um, should be a good time just hanging out, doing some bench flying. We haven't just sat in here and done some bench flying for a while, so thanks, everybody, for joining us. The usual suspects are back in the studio here, uh, looking directly across here at the one and only great white hunter, Mike Coolins. Morning, everyone. Uh, and, of course, up there on the big screen TV, everybody can see. Uh, the crazy Canadian, Andre Russo. Welcome. Good morning. And if anybody's just joining us, also uh, the voice you're hearing, uh, that's me, Chris, uh, or maybe also known as Crash. A lot of people call me for various reasons. <laughs> I know why. Not only <laughs> in airplanes, but uh, uh, other things uh, also. Uh, so, motocross, mountain biking, yeah. any of those things. Yeah, work. we got Mike doing a little mountain biking, trying Do to get him in shape. Do they have any bench biking I could take part of? <laughs> <laughs> Because it's a little more aggressive than I thought. Uh. <laughs> well, what were you thinking? Oh, no, man. I, yeah, I don't want to get too off topic with bike. RC stuff, but my gosh, that mountain biking was something else. Hello, Kimberly Williams, Ron Cagalone. She just popped on and is watching probably in bed with our dog, Finley. Uh. So thanks for joining us. Uh, all right, real quick, run through some sponsors. Thanks, everybody, for helping the show out. All you Patreon uh, people out there, thank you very much. If you're interested, if you're new to the show or you want to help the show out, please go check out patreon.com slash rcafterhours. Uh, anything you can do to help us out, it definitely keeps the show going without you Patreon people. We wouldn't be sitting here right now talking to you guys. So anything helps out, whether it's a dollar a month, you know, we all spend way more than that. You know, like I said, if we find a dollar on, on change in the couch cushions or in the, the floor of your car or whatever. So anything helps out. Um, we've had quite a few new Patreon people here recently, and we really appreciate that, and it helps us out greatly. So thank you, everyone, for Patreon. Uh, also, real quick. Oh, it's my son's yeah, name. <laughs> <I just saw laughs> <that>. Figures. <laughs> 
Uh, real yeah. quick, getfpv.com. Please go check out getfpv.com. These people are fantastic. Anything drone or FPV related, this is where you need to go. They have everything imaginable that is related to drones and FPV. So go there. And the cool thing with Get FPV is they have an RC After Hours discount code. Now, if you're new to listening, I'll give you the code. But if you've been listening for a while, you've had an older code, it is no longer. So Don't get even some, say that one. I'm not even going <laughs> to say it. But we've had some emails about, hey, the code's not working. That's because we have a new code. Use this the one. new code is RC After Hours. And you have to spend $120 in your cart. Once you do that and type in RC After Hours, you get 10% discount on your entire order, which is actually quite a bit. So RC After Hours is code. Spend $120, and you get 10% off your entire order. So please go check out GetFPV.com. Uh, fantastic service down there. Generally, everything you order, once you order it that day, it'll ship out. It generally, in the United States, it'll show up on your doorstep within a couple days, which is great. Because how many other times I've ordered from different companies on the West Coast, and sometimes it takes over a week. And I hate waiting for packages. And you order from Get, and boom, in two days, you're like, huh, there's a box on my doorstep. What the heck? Hey, that's that order I just placed two days ago. You're part of the Today's Society of Instant Gratification, yes. aren't you? <laughs> yes. I want it now, Mike. You right don't want now. the horse and buggy no. delivery. <laughs> no. Or so, the, or the over-the-seas that's, boat. That's like upscale. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder with these companies, it would be faster with horse and buggy. It's about our corporate delivery. Yes. Box. It takes two weeks. It's, or like, what are they doing using the Amish? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Lowest bidder, lowest bidder. <laughs> you know, and, and especially like, like if you're wow. ordering anything, you know. If I swear they just store it in a warehouse just to like agitate people. <laughs> yeah, I know. Ah, uh, it's Monday. <laughs> we'll get it maybe out by Wednesday. <laughs> ah, you know, we'll see how it goes. We'll have to wait till route goes that way next month. Yeah. Throw it on the truck. So that's a great thing with Get FPV. You order it, and generally within that two days, nice. it is on your doorstep, depending on where you are. Uh, fantastic company, great customer service. You can email them, FaceTime them if you have any problems, any questions. And then also, I, I keep harping on this, but it's great information. They also have getfpv.com slash learn. If you have any questions or anything about whatever related to drones or um, FPV, all, there's tons of information on there, whether it be frames or ESCs or motors or cameras or Anything goggles, uh, you can get a lot more information there. And, it takes and, intimidation. Factor yeah, exactly. Out for sure. Or if you're on the fence about like one that. thing or the other, and you're not and sure. We've discussed that before. If you don't have a buddy into it, having yeah. these outlets is a is really awesome. Right, right. So uh, thank you, everybody, um, and thanks. Get FPV. Please go check out getfpv.com because again, without our Patreon and Get FPV, we wouldn't be sitting here uh, talking to you guys. So. Where do we want to start today? We have no guest. Uh, Mike, you actually got out and did a little flying uh, a couple weeks ago, right? Very little. Very little? Yeah. Um, so who was all there? Because I wasn't there. Pat Truesdale. Yeah. And uh, Chloe Prince and her dad is a Barry, I believe. Yeah. And I think her son, if I remember his name correctly, Logan. Mm -hmm. So we were all flying there. And I, I took I took one of the Motion RC. I, I, is it the P-15? Is that what it's <clears> called? <throat> P-15. The yes, wing, yes. Ducted wing. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I took, well, first of all, I flew my Radian just to get my comfort level. I just took two planes, and I told Pat to take his Radian because I wanted just to do some gliding. It was going to get hotter that day. So I flew the, I flew about four packs, four or five through the Radian, which is a lot of flying time, obviously, because you're sitting up there and just gliding most of the battery life. Um, and then I, then he brought his F, the Thunder Chief, F-105. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And uh, he had a lot of bowing on his servo control linkages. And I said, you might want to put the zip ties on before you try chucking this because they're, they're bowing. It's going to limit your control on the elevator quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, right. And, and actually, to your point, <clears throat> I, I, and it was a good point you made, maybe instead of doing the zip ties, holding the control linkages mm -hmm. close to the fuselage mm -hmm. to keep them from bowing or bending. Right. You said maybe just work work the elevators a little bit to loosen that hinge point. Right. And um, that, that may have that may have solved it because my first one I didn't have that issue. Mm -hmm. It seemed, 
But mm-hmm. my second one, maybe it was stiffer and causing that that bend on them rods. So I fixed it by using the zip tie hot glue trick, mm-hmm. where you just make a loose loop around and then poke it through the foam yeah. and hot glue it to the fuselage. Right. But, and uh, Andre, I don't I know if you if you ever got a chance to look at yours, and that's a lot of thing. Uh, that happens when these planes come from the factory and when they're completely, you know, a lot of these are just ready to go. Everything's all set up and you don't, you know, actually get to feel the control services or a lot of people forget to check them. So if you get your F-105, your P-15 and take those control surfaces and and really work work them them and bend them full, full, you know, yes, and get them to loosen up. Even a little pass throw, maybe just to loosen it up. Yeah, so that could be one reason why those control rods were... uh, bend in a little bit oh no 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 yeah and um anyway so he didn't fly it and we didn't think about the you know the uh-huh. week in the or work it a little bit right and i said well if i fly the p15 made in it here you're gonna fly the f105 and when i threw the p15 up I, I threw it because I re- remember reading you said throw it yes. aggressively, and I threw it pretty aggressive and I mean it went straight down and I, I had full elevator up huh and, and it just, like, caught at the very last second and did, like, a quick dip into the grass. Yeah. So no damage. Amazing. I, I mean, seeing it, you're like, this thing's toast because it's, like, straight into the ground. Like, I just chucked it right into the ground. Yeah. Kind of like when you had the throttle back or the thrust backwards. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah it was yeah, just right. like that. I'm like, yeah. this thing's toast. Yeah. But it did it did pick up. And I, I'm, like, a nervous wreck. I'm, like, having a heart attack. and. And I'm like, I'm, the only thing I can guess, and I'm a little hesitant to even, I want to retry it with you, but it ripped all the ESC. Uh, oh, mine did the same the thing. The bananas. Yeah. Or, well, banana jacks or yeah. whatever out, connections. So I couldn't ESC fly it again that day, even if I wanted to. But I might have had the battery, too. Because we did. We looked up the CG, and I put it where it was at, really mm-hmm. close. But mm-hmm. it, maybe it was too nose-heavy is all I can figure why it took what, that straight What size down. of battery? I think I only had a 13, it might have been a 1600, but I think I'm pretty, no, I took a 1300 because it was the same batteries I was using in my Radiant. I kept all the packs the same. Huh. So. Uh, I'm willing to bet you were nose, you were yeah. super nose heavy. Then it had because to have been. It that had thing, to have been. That thing, that thing it, it, on its own will just glide yeah, really nicely, then it, right? Yeah, it so. it I would say it, good chances are, and that's why I'm going to put the weight further back, and I think I'll have a successful yep. launch. So. Mm-hmm. So anyways, I tried, and I said, well, since I tried main mine, you got to do the F-105. Yeah. Like, oh. no. <laughs> After seeing that, I'm like, I did my part. So <laughs> Pat, we got the chuckling about it. <laughs> Pat <laughs> we has laughing, had so. that 105 <laughs> since Christmas. <laughs> he had it before oh, any wow. of us had well, one. Should, yeah. And he hasn't yeah. flown yeah. it yet. It, it, I know. We got to get him in the air. Like, with what's it. going on? We're just going to yeah. we'll have to make him, you know? <laughs> wow, that's crazy. And then I know, uh, well, Chloe's dad had a bad, Barry had a really bad wreck at the end, right as we left. Uh-huh. I'm not even sure what he was flying. It was a high wing. And I can't remember. I told you the time what it was, and I can't remember it now. Mm-hmm. But they flew the, con- I think the Convergence. They all three had that, I think, or two of them. And they loved that thing. They really loved that thing. But it, it wasn't as big a wingspan as a radian. I put my radian beside just to get a mm-hmm. perspective on it. And, mm-hmm. and it's smaller, but... More like the, Sky Surfer size, uh, almost, or whatever. Ca- Ascendant? Ca- what oh, is the name it's of not it? the Convergence. Chloe the convergence says the Valiant. Is... He crashed his Valiant. That's oh. it. That's it. Oh, the yeah. Valiant. Yeah, it was oh. hard. And she's like, I guess we'll have to go to the shop and buy a Valiant. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Trying to make him feel better, obviously. Yeah. And I felt bad. I was like, ooh, that was... I think he had a brown out or something. It wasn't... Because he just kind of like... Hands off something the steps and it was going down. Oh, jeez. So, yeah. So it took it took a it took a beating. Yeah, I didn't go up and look at the wreckage. I had to get going. I forget what I was doing, but Pat and I left at the same time. Mm-hmm. And then uh, what? Yeah, they were flying some kind of like glider. And I is that the crescendo? Crescendo, yeah. Chiming in. Yeah. Okay, I'm glad she's here because I I don't remember the planes, but they really they had a lot of good things to say about that plane. Mm-hmm. So they flew that quite a bit. I know her son flew that. I'm pretty sure too. Yeah. So we had a good time, and the weather was so beautiful. I'm like, we have got to capitalize on this weather. I was going to get out there regardless if you could get out there or whatever. So, my dog wants in, and out. in fact, in I want to fly some more. I definitely want to take the P15 out again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got to get that thing and up I re- going for you. Yeah, so yeah. We'll, we'll do that. That will be my next pro- project yeah. to get in the air. And I want to fly our F-105s together. Too. Yeah, yeah. So those are two on my to-do list on the next fly. Yeah. Andre, did you have you had any uh, more jet incidences up there? 
Any close no. calls? No. 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 Actually, um, the last weekend was just normal flying. So I flew. Uh, I was testing the GoPro versus uh, uh, my normal camera. So I flew the. Uh, it's sitting right above my head here. Actually, the Slowpoke, and the and I and I pulled out the Durafly Excalibur for the first time in a long time and really had a good time flying that plane because every time i've had it out it's been for you know video production and stuff like this and you're just banging through the packs you're flying a thing hard fast dives everything so i had one battery and i must have been up there for like i came in earlier than i expected because i was being bit up after 10 minutes by the bugs um but that thing is you know one of still one of my favorite planes just to cruise around with and then you know you do your aerobatics and your mm-hmm. dives and i was just doing continuous laps around the park with no power right and then you know come down oh bring it up it's it's basically you know a high speed radian right you know i was thinking the other day there for a while and i i don't know see what you guys think or anybody hanging out with us here on facebook live you know we flew those high wing trainers a lot there for a while it was either radians or high wing trainers and we got so accustomed to what those planes were doing as far as flying ease of flying the takeoffs the landings blah 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 when we resorted back to the the jets or something that's flying fast did you guys really feel like there for a little while you're out of your element like and even coming in the land you oh it's intimidating every time for me but i don't know about you you saw us in may yeah, that's remember, true. Remember May? It took us like a, it took us like four flights with the the tundras, the tundras. just to relax. Yeah, <laughs> it's almost like you do feel like you have to gauge yourself. Like even with a P fifty, which is a wing, I'm like, oh, yeah, this will be easy. I know, but I'm like, I'm yeah. glad gradually I get the radio now, get some confidence, and then I right. go fly something new or made in something, you know, just for that auxiliary or that adrenaline. And then even the year before, like I had the Tundra, I'm dragging the tail, inverted, just doing, yeah, you did, know. Yeah, I know. This year, I was like, I'm not even flying even inverted. inverted. Like even what? the P-15 yeah. or something, like, I'm not doing no. it. I'm like, really? Chris, no. you're killing me. Yeah. But I was... feel like I need simulator time for inverted flight again, because I know when I was flying a lot inverted, I did a simulation, and that helps so much, just mm-hmm. to know your, how much up pushing yeah yeah and stuff I'm yeah different but i i just think those big high wing planes have they, kind they, of spoiled it, us a little bit they, they basically do did. whatever you want to do with them it don't matter but they're great to go yeah you, know, you just want to be a little easier on the mind you don't have to worry really about stalling them that much or you can land them and plop them down anywhere and they're just and then you pop into a jet or you're, a fast wing or FPV wing. and There's adrenaline there. Next thing so. you know, you're at one end of the field to the other in like two seconds. Yeah. You're like, geez, you're just, now you're I got to turn. just to do a pattern yeah. you know, without any anything crazy. Right. So yeah, I don't try know. a 90 mil, man. Jeepers. Oh, yeah. no, no, dude. No, it's, it's – There's, <laughs> there's – n- No. No, it's the fun part. No. You, have, you have three minutes. Three yeah, minutes and a six hundred dollar plane. No. Uh-uh. You guys are adrenaline junkies, no. both of you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like in the wrong thing. Not not with a six hundred dollar like, ninety millimeter. I like sitting in a tree yeah. just letting the game come. <laughs> no. It's a little more easy on the mind. No. And I still panic about that one shot the whole time. Yeah. I got one <laughs> shot at this <laughs> to crack. <laughs> Uh, Chloe says she's on her second Thunder Chief. She says it's not easy to toss that thing and get lift. Needs a quarterback. She's not a big fan of it. I know that talking with her. Yeah. Yeah. And we didn't have as yeah. big a problem fl- in flight, but she thinks they're underpowered. Yeah, and I was going to like, tell her. I don't know if we got a chance to check her throttle setting on that because we we found out on a couple oh, radios okay. that they weren't. You know, you had to check your throttle oh, to make that sure. Might be messing her up. Uh, Celebration. Yeah, make sure you're getting the full, full proper range. Because I know with you know I fly spec. Room. calibration yeah. yeah and the thunder chief really it it's got plenty of power we've had no issues with it you that's know. a very good point because even when i set mine up i know the trim had to be down so yes there's, there's something goofy with spectrum and, and trying to get that yes that esc to work right properly oh, right yeah. so i'm that's guessing good. she probably wasn't getting the full uh, throttle well range on that very either well. that or something uh, uh, goofy with you know esc or motor but um uh, we haven't had any issues, and w- once you get them, once you do get these little belly lander jets set yeah. up, 
they are it a is lot a of sweet, fun. For and the money, it is the sweetest thing going in my mind. And, and later on, I think what we're going to do is talk a little bit about so far this year. Some of the, our favorite things have come out or things That's we have are flown. In the, so in my top five, yeah, for sure. Um, we'll see yeah. where that goes from yeah. there. So, Andre, what, and, and on those ahead. jets, we learned that high uh high throws on your elevators lots of expo yeah lots and of expo despite despite what they're saying we still i still think 3s a high c rated 3s 1300 you're not going to get the flight times but the aircraft will be lighter and more nimble because i mean that's what that's what happened with my my one pardon me my 105 uh, the first time on a uh 3s thir- uh, 2200 mm-hmm. it just i just ran out of lift and yeah up, and it went so and i did buy the 1600 packs and now i'm a little hesitant to put it in my f-105 but i am going to try them out to mm-hmm. see if i get a little longer and, flight time. and i think I, also for me anyway personally set up some dual rates for just take off and getting going put it on high rates make sure that thing gets I've off never the ground used rates my whole life and once you get it up in the air, once you get it up in the air, slip can, back over to to well, low right, rates because right, you know right. we seen Andre with that P fifteen. He rolled that thing to the point where I, I didn't know which end was. <laughs> I don't know how you even you just rolled it. I think that's what scared you about going inverted with it. You're like, I'm not doing no, it. No, yeah, <laughs> I'm just seeing that roll rate. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, Looks like a spiraling yeah, dart. Right. Oh yeah. So no more jet flying then, Andre, the last time you went out. Not this weekend. Not this weekend. Uh, last weekend, too. Last weekend was just cruising around. I was testing out that uh, – uh, I was testing out the module, the the uh, DSMX module that uh, that Matt had passed me. So mm-hmm. I was flying with that a little bit, some smaller airplanes. So I'm going to work on that through the Spectrum aircraft that I have. Spectrum, get it? Uh, yes. Um yeah. So, hey, Chloe t- says she she got a B twenty four from Motion RC. That's that's crazy. Wow. <laughs> that that one's gonna need a good runway. I don't yeah. think you're too big on that one. Yeah, I don't so. know what we're gonna do with that thing. Get that thing. <laughs> um, what was I gonna ask you? Oh, Andre, I just wanted you to talk a little bit about you were doing some camera testing because. Uh, okay. We you know definitely yes. found out you know you can spend. Four or five hundred dollars on a GoPro, or you can spend a hundred dollars on some cheaper cameras, and they're, you know, unless maybe you're doing 4K or something, they're they're generally pretty comparable to what we yeah. found. So, one of the gentlemen here that I, that I actually haven't flown yet with, but I'm going to. His name is Captain Drone on on YouTube. It's a pretty respectable YouTube channel. He says, "Here, I've got a GoPro five that you can test." So I made a little gizmo. And strap the two of my cameras on my head, and um, I primarily shoot. This guy is—it's uh, supposed to be 4K, but it's not. It's a little uh, NCAM or whatever. It's sent to me by uh, Gearbest, Gearbest, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they got cranky when I said it's not a 4K camera, and you know the relationship went went south from there. So they're 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 TV, lost as far as I'm concerned. But it, I strapped the two cameras to my head. The GoPro was doing 4K 30, mm-hmm. and obviously I edit in 1080, and I post to YouTube in 1080. Mm-hmm. And really, the only advantage uh, the GoPro offered was I could zoom in, and the zoom in was cleaner uh, because of the extra data, but. The throwback to that is the files are, you know, larger on the laptop. It's more processing on the laptop. Yes, mm-hmm. I can zoom in. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess I, the, the 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 you know the Cole's Note version of this is this camera works just fine. I've got to work on the audio once in a while because I find it blows out. Um, and uh, but the colors and everything were fine. And this is just a cheapo 1080. If people are wanting a camera that can zoom in and capture that aircraft, and, and a, you, you have to work with a totally different device, like uh, an action cam, pardon me, will not do it because the lens is only so big. I mean, that's a tiny lens. You mm-hmm. need a full camera, with a proper lens, kind of yeah. what you see with the flight test guys doing, right? Yep, that's the only way you're able to zoom in. And nine times out of ten, I'm flying solo. So, uh, Captain Drone is, is uh, um, his name is uh, Steve. He, he's uh, he's kind of keen to get up there and do some flying with me. So, we're gonna try. Well, I'll pick a slow high wing or something, probably the Tundra, and we'll do some practice and see how we can all fly together and everything and just coordinate the videos. Um, you know, just for that added element. But otherwise, you know, the little action cam. So um, Andrew Newton, uh, who's got a huge YouTube channel and often, you know, will we'll come, you know, come to my call. I asked him a bunch of questions about like two or three different cameras. He's, oh, I've got those from my reviews. Mm-hmm. And he threw up a bunch of cameras and, and went through and says, oh, and here's the external microphone. So 
we had a good chat about some of the products and everything. So it was neat. The internet kind of, you know, stepped up and we got our opinions. It's, um, uh, so I being asked, you know, am I going to buy a GoPro? I don't know yet if I'm actually going to buy a GoPro. I'm a little hesitant to go and buy a $200 piece of equipment from, um, for, from Banggood or something like that, just because it's shipping overseas and so on. But at the same time, eh, this does the job. I'd rather put $200 to $600 in other projects and other things that I'm going to be working on throughout the year and looking forward into uh, 2019 as far as some of the ideas I have. So, yeah, Staying so long camera. short, you can get mm-hmm. away with a $200 camera just fine if you want to do your, uh, you know, your YouTube videos. That's, Staying you know, on that's the, the camera short. topic, uh, Justin Burkowski oh. said D- DGI is coming out with four new products, and one of them has a zooming camera, I know, on it. Yeah, I think August. I didn't get the chance to research it or look it up, but he said there's four new products are releasing soon. And August maybe twenty, soon. August twenty third, they're doing a big release thing. So and we'll... he said one of them definitely has a zooming camera. Oh no, kidding! Yeah, wow. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I was been uh, kind of I said, keeping that'd be tabs. Kind of neat. Yeah. yeah, yeah. August twenty third. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what's going on in that. Hey, how's that antenna been working for you? Good. You like it? You know what? <laughs> it's funny. I uh, I had an issue with the uh, with my antenna on my DJI. DJI. <laughs> J, J, J. Hey guys, J. Yeah. I got it right. Um, <laughs> I said DJI just because that's what people say, but I understand it's DJI in the letters. J, J, J. So I had that upgraded antenna set on my, and I was actually I flew the Phantom for the first time since like March. The last time I flew, I was doing that uh, those Mevo goggle things in the middle of the mm-hmm. winter, right? Testing, and it was freezing cold. So I sat down and baked for like a half an hour, flying around, and just had a really good time with the aircraft again. I, no updates, nothing. It just went. I set my limits, my my distance limits, my altitude limits, and I went off on a flight. Now, the issue I was having, so I have the what are they? The FPVLR.com. So long range antennas. Mm-hmm. Now I didn't buy these for long range. I bought them because I was taking so many video hits yeah. that it actually, you know, like we, didn't, I didn't even fly it in May because when, when I was down, uh, just because we were just doing other stuff. But um, uh, the issue I discovered I had was because I was taking the antennas off all the time. So this is for for people listening on the podcast. You've got your normal antennas on your DJI remote, and they're you know they're just a little floppy style antennas. You know your whips. Uh, this new setup has barrel connectors and then a whole uh, whether they're coil um, coil circular antennas po- circular Cir- polarized thank antennas. You. Yeah, and it sits on a plate on the bottom of it. So I was always taking mine off, and what had happened was because of the ta- removing and everything, I actually broke the, the the center core wire off the base on inside the radio. Oh. Uh, so this is the extended wire that goes into yes. a to a to a barrel connector. Uh, so I said, okay, enough of that. My dad and I we repaired it. You know, he's got some fine finer soldering equipment, and everything, and, and and it worked. And I was out flying, and I had very little issues. There was enough uh, traffic around that I was taking the occasional hit, but it wasn't as severe as some of the stuff we saw like, like two years ago before I bought the antennas, Chris. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, yesterday I was out. Uh, I got my email from Princess Auto, which is our version of Hyper Freight, and I picked <laughs> up another weather case. Ah. So, you know, another 16, 16 and a half by 12 and a half kind of thing. Uh, I use one of these already for my FPV equipment. Mm-hmm. Um, Kind of, kind of annoying that I can't get everything into one container, but now I don't have to take my remote apart every time I, uh, I, I you know, have to. I just remember doing both bags because, and I'll put my tablet in there and everything, and it'll be ready to go. So right. that just alleviates that problem. Uh, otherwise, it was just really nice. It was funny because I hadn't flown this thing, so the first thing I do is I bow them out to that now burnt out this uh, farmhouse. And I just, you know, practiced my, you know, rudder in, turning radius stuff and just, you know, flew it around. The funniest part was there, we have a splash park nearby. So obviously rules of the rules of the land in Canada is like, you know, 75 meters. Don't even ask me what that is in feet. So I'm like, I'm not (laughs) even going anywhere near buildings or people or nothing. I'm over farm fields. And I pop up over these set of trees because I'm doing my test, right? Uh And all of a sudden I hear the kids at the splash park going, there it is. There's a drone. No way. That's all I need. Oh, geez. I'm nowhere near these guys, but they oh saw me take gosh. off, right? Yeah. And I'm at the other side of the field, and the kids saw me take off, and I'm like, that's all I need, a parent to come over and start yelling at me, and I'm shooting video of their kids. Oh, I'm like, geez. no, 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 no. I'm over the farm fields. I'm going over farmland. I'm testing other stuff, but it's still kind of funny. Wow. 
Awesome. Yep. Uh, what, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Since we've had so many guests here lately, there's been a bunch of new products out, and i got a list yep. of them. So why don't we run through and get some talk about some and some of these products were released almost a month ago I think. So I'm going to pull some up here and talk about them. So let's go over to Horizon. Um the first one I want to talk about that was released a while ago is they brought out the Ultra Micro. Now if anybody has been listening or follows along here um Horizon brought out a new F-27, kind of redid it, got rid of the rudders, changed some things around, put uh, AS-3X on it, and it's been out for a while. So naturally what they've done is they've turned around and brought out the Ultra Micro F-27 Evolution Bind and Fly Basic Ultra Fun and Fast 3-Cell Ultra Micro Experience. Uh... First ever, three-cell compatible, the fastest prop-driven ultra-microplane yet. Wide performance envelope for slow and fast flying, everything in between. More durable and lightweight EPO construction and rubber nose cone. Completely factory assembled and ready to fly right out of the box. Spectrum receiver, industry leading 2.4 technology. Optionally use safe flight, added stability and precision of AS3X. Convenient uh, magnetic Battery hatch, powerful 3,000 kV brushless motor, vivid and easy to see, and $99. That's pretty good. Uh, 300 milliamp, 3 cell, 11.1 LiPo. Uh, let's see. The F27 is the fastest prop driven ultra micro airplane yet. It's also the first ever officially, officially. 3-cell LiPo compatible. Now, Andre, you have the old version. Yeah. And I had the old version for a while, which flew on 2-cell. And it was pretty good and pretty fast. So I can't imagine this thing on 3-cell is going to be really zooming around. And They're really testing our eyes, aren't they? I was just going to say, <laughs> uh, trying yeah. to watch that thing zoom around on 3-cell. Oh, with a three, And it's a 300 milliamp battery, so you're going to get some pretty good flight flight times on it. Now the, that's crazy. Yeah, and the cool thing is, uh, more durable, lightweight EPO construction and rubber nose cone. So it looks like they made it a little bit beefier, I believe. At least it's brightly colored. Yeah, because I wasn't. Now I can't think. EPS was the old. Was it EPS? The old. Yeah. Yeah. So now they're all basically a lot of these ultra micros are going to the the, their Z foam, the EPO. So the problem with the old ultra micro F twenty seven is anytime, unless it was a perfect landing. A lot of times, if you had a rough landing or a crash, a thing broke right at behind the nose, right by the canopy. And I'm telling you, I must have broke mine a hundred times, glued it, broke it, glued it, broke it. And finally, I just got to the point where it got too heavy. I replaced the airframe once, flew it some more, broke it some more. I was done with it. I'm like, I I had my fun with it. I'm done. Uh, So, you know, we looked at, if you remember when we were at the show, Mike, when we were looking at the, uh, the, um, FPV one? Yeah, the FPV Ultra Micro. Remember, we were checking it out, and it's the new uh, Z Foam. We were bending it all around, and it it felt really sturdy. So I think now with these things, they are a little heavier, I believe. But I'll take the the, the heaviness over the. But you, you got know, a little with, more power too. With yeah, the well, that's the thing. So now can, going the three can, cell. Yeah. yeah. Now I I think this w- this thing would be fun just to crank around. But the thing is. I don't know if I would just get this one or go for the FPV version and fly the FPV. I don't know. I'm on the fence with that. See, it's funny because I uh, think I'm that, in the middle of strapping FPV to my old one. Are you really? I think you want FPV because yeah. to go through like goal posts and stuff. I mean, I think it'd, be, it'd make more fun yeah. to fly because it, it's going to be challenging on your eye being that small. You but know, if you have FPV, here's, version, you don't have to worry here's about Here's a question. Can, can you take the FPV one? Switch out probably the well. See, it's one board, so you'd have to change the ESC or the board out. I don't know if it's the same motor because I would want the FPV one to fly on three cell, mm-hmm. just for that <laughs> extra speed. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that was that's something we'll have to look into. Or do you just take this one, stick a little camera in it? You know, get the camera that's in the FPV one, stick that camera in it, and fly this. You know what I mean? So that's yeah. something we'll have to. Uh, 
I didn't realize the FPV no, for, one you were referring to had the smaller battery. Yeah, it's only a two cell. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's like the old. It's the old style, and the and the camera's buried in the nose section, so they the, the fuselage is tiny different. I guess the nice thing is it, it, it's kind of sad that they got rid of the rudder, but I get it because that's with the rudder. That's when I've crashed mine because you know you're goofing around yes. and you throw a little rudder into it and it just corks. Yes. Yeah. 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 So. yeah. I agree. Get rid of the rudders. It, it's way more fun. Bank and yank. But uh, yeah. So. If you're looking for something cool to just jam around, you got a smaller field but want to go fast, and you and you like the the wings, uh, there you go, the Ultra Micro F27. But I guess the only bad thing going against the 3S is suddenly you have yet another set of batteries that you can't use anywhere else, unless this is just where they're going with their Ultra Micro line. Eventually, they're going to be like these little tiny 3S packs, and you know and that's where you're going to go. But right now, at least I can take those 2S. You know, 280 packs, and I can fly them in, in about two or three different airplanes I have here. Yeah, it definitely would be interesting down the road to see, you know, when they start bringing out some more ultra micro warbirds, you know, because it just, you know, how long did it take Horizon now? Their warbirds are just now getting to the four cell, you know, mm. where everything was mm-hmm. always three cell, and now we're starting to see three or four cell come out. So, are they going to take some of these ultra micro? Beef them up with bad yeah, bad. maybe maybe make them a little bit bigger, a little bit tougher. Go to the Z fo- Z f- Z foam and uh, have that option to go two or three cell. I'd like to see that, just you know, for an option. Yeah. And if they are a little bit bigger, who who cares? You know what I mean? Yeah, because we know they stepped the size up when they made the timber. Yes, uh, the UMX timber. Yep, and you know. You know, maybe they need another class, you know, like I said, when we said when this one came out, maybe they just need something else. But yeah, can you imagine that UMX Timber on 3S would be a riot? Ooh, <laughs> Ooh. yeah, you're not kidding. Mm. Uh, mm. The other thing, let's see if I can find it here. Oh, I wanted to talk about this real quick because a lot of people, we get, you know, uh, people talking or emails or whatever about, you know, Horizon Hobby and their AS3X and the Spectrum, and we don't use that, and we're, you know. So what they did is um, they took one of their older P51 Mustangs that they had. I think they just changed the scheme on it, and now what they did is they put it under the Force name, which is kind of like their discounted uh, branding uh, that uh, Horizon Hobby's been doing. So what you get is their uh, 1.1 meter P51D Mustang, and what this I think is for is if you don't want to if you don't fly Spectrum you don't want to buy their planes with the uh, AS3X or don't want all that stuff in there. So what you have is uh, one of their nice flying P51 Warbirds uh, where you can put your own receiver. You know, it takes a 2200 to 2600 milliamp battery, and you got your own plane to do whatever you want with it. And it's a little bit cheaper uh, as the price is uh, 199. So all you got to do is throw your receiver, and then what you get. Is ready to fly basically with that, you know, bat. You need your battery receiver, uh, flaps installed, retractable electric main gear installed, of course, aileron, rudder, throttle, steerable tail wheel, powerful brushless motor, four blade uh, scale prop, easy access battery hatch, durable construction, EPO material, simulated gear struts, engine exhaust, guns, clear canopy, cockpit deep, detail, pilot figure, and finished in World War II tribute. Uh, color scheme convenient uh, tight snap top hatch um, 30 amp brushless ESC 15 size uh, motor so basically it's just one of their planes that maybe they were going to discontinued in their line and they took all their stuff out and put it in the force line and made it cheaper so man why wouldn't they have changed out the prop ditched the landing gear and made a belly lander that would be fine with me I would have no problems with that um yeah, fifty bucks. You know, yeah. take take knock fifty dollars off. Get rid of those landing gear. Take that floor blade prop. Turn it into a two blade, and ta-da! Yeah, put a plastic skid, gunslinger. Yeah, bag. maybe try to put a plastic yeah. skid on the bottom and make it. Yeah, I would absolutely, absolutely. Does retractable go. landing gear. Retractable gear okay. on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for two hundred dollars, you know, you're getting the uh, uh, full on. You know. And, and, again, you might even be able to knock more than that off, Andre. Get rid of the flaps, too. I mean, if you're going to do a belly, yeah. belly lander, you wouldn't need the flaps. Um, yeah. But, you know, I, I, I can't say anything bad because a lot of people like all the bells and whistles. You know, they want the lights and the flaps and retractable gear and all that stuff. So, But I would like to see, I know, we've talked about it a million times. Even if it was a little bit smaller and they went back to the Wildcat size or the 
the P51BL size, just a little bit smaller, easier to handle. Bring out a couple new warbirds for strictly belly landers. Uh, I can't remember yep. what's what's the wildcat going for now. They had it on sale a while back too. It was per- fairly cheap. Like it was very one twenty. Not was it one twenty nine or one thirty or something like that. Um, I don't know. I have to look. Yeah, Come on. but it's quite a bit cheaper. Is what I'm saying. So it's even more yes. than fifty dollars. Uh, Nick says, yeah, you can buy e-flight planes without the RX. That is true. A lot of them are plug and play. Um, but I think what they're doing with these is some of the planes they are discontinuing. I think on their regular e-flight line might be an older plane. Uh, they're kind of rebranding them and putting them in the Force RC. So uh, I think this is just an older plane, to be honest with you. $150 for the Wildcat. 150 Okay, so you're right. Right around $50. Hmm. Interesting. See, it's crazy. You can you can get yourself a full size, you know, uh, a Wildcat or or UMX uh, F twenty seven for you know within the same price range. Yeah, right. So there you go. If you want just a good flying P fifty one, and there you go, Force RC. Now the next thing I want to talk about. This is kind of surprising to me, uh, and I don't know how they. Go along and say, you know, have a, a large scale version of whatever it is. If it's, uh, we're going to talk about the mini conversions, but whether it be the F 27 or the, or one of their Warbirds or whatever, I'd like to know how they come up and go, you know what, let's make this into an ultra micro. Do they do some testing with these and go, you know, this one works great as an ultra micro and some of them don't, you know, when you scale them down? I don't know. I'm like, but I never in a million years thought I was would see a mini conversions come out. And I'll be honest, and I don't know numbers, and I'm just taking a guess, but I didn't really seem to think talking with a lot of people and reading the forms and stuff that the regular convergence was a big hit. You know, we were, we were on the fence of getting one and testing one. So... You know, they, yeah. Why did they choose this platform to go? Mini? Yeah, it yeah. wasn't. Which one was it, Andre? That they put on a deep, deep discount? Was that the regular convergence? That's or? the X. That's the X hover. Oh, the X hover. Okay, that's right. So it wasn't the convergence. But I really didn't think that they were going to make a mini convergence. Now, uh, yeah, may, maybe surprising. I could see a version two of the regular convergence. You know, better software or something like that. So. Andre, I was very, very surprised that they come out with this Mini. Now, maybe it's better, more fun, they, they realize, and you can fly it around in smaller spaces, and it's better than the regular. Because the, the full-size conversions, watching the videos and talking to people, it kind of was a handful to fly, and it was pretty fast. You agree with that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. It moved. I watched a couple of them. They moved around, and it's... Uh... You, you either fly it as an airplane or fly it as a quad, right? Mm-hmm. So you're like, eh. and it doesn't seem, yeah. And we we saw our share of servo issues. Like if you if you Google it and look for servo failures on a convergent, it's it's messy. Yeah. So, so there you go, Mike. That's kind of the size difference yeah, between the I two. See that. Yeah. Uh, and I'll show you a picture with somebody. It is fairly small. It's a cool yeah. little air, and again, I've never flown one. I kind of like the concept just because it's different. There's, you know, nothing really out there like that. But and the they, transitioning, I don't know, man. If you get a bad servo or something, it, it, there's it, a servo technology there for for right. these types of designs. Right. Yet, I don't know. I don't. I never owned one, so I can't talk too much about it. But. And they're not, and it's not for what it is. It's not cheap. It's no, not cheap at all. It's exactly. $200. Yeah, two hundred dollars for a micro. I think that's. I mean, I I get it. You know, you're getting a lot for your money. I assume. But yeah, two hundred bucks. I w- I would think if they kind of put this more into the regular micro price of e- even I think it's still high, but so, you know one fifty, Andre. I think it would be better. So it'll be very interesting to see once this thing gets out. Shipments uh, supposed to be starting late September. After this initial first shipment gets out, whether this gets a little bit di- of a discount, you know, down well, the road. That, okay, that- so so here. Here's something really funny. I'm reading the site, and there's an important note. Yes, I see that. It says the mini conversion yes. plug and play can only operate on a DSMX or DMSS two 
uh, DSMM2, yeah, whatever, receiver. No other receivers from Futaba, Getty, Gropner, MXP, etc. can be used. Is that More Getty or Jetty? Jetty. Yeah. Jetty. Jetty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get yeah. you with your Jetty. You, you get what I'm talking That's crazy. Yeah. So you can't fly. So what's the point of putting out a plug and play model? <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm no, curious too. I does, is this since I don't see any rudder. I assume it's differential thrust for turning and banking. I believe so. I, mean, I believe so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 That's exactly what it is—a tricopter with a wing on it, basically. Because yeah. um, the back, the back one has an axis, just like your mini tri, Mike. But the front two can tilt. Yeah. So you've got servo driven there, so you can transition. So it would be oh, kind of neat if you could like yeah. fly it halfway and do some wicked alphas and stuff. But I think it's down or up, kind of. If yeah. I'm correct. But, yeah. yeah, I'm sure. What what kills me? We're not even kills me. It's just like there's there. Why don't they have like a canopy that, that you can put FPV into it, and then you can have some serious fun with it? Yeah, because the regular convergence does have uh, an optional FPV camera, yeah, which is have kind a prop of in front of it, or anything. Which like is that. kind of cool because it tilts with the with the copter, I believe. I think if if I'm thinking or am I wrong? Oh, it is. It is FPV ready. Oh, is it? So they. Yeah, they, they say first person ready. You can, uh, yep. yeah, they've got line. the little camera that can go right into the board. So, yeah, Chris Good yeah. Chris Goodwin's making fun of us because we're slaughtering all these names. Yeah, I agree with you. We're, <laughs> we're, we're not on our A game today, that's for sure. But uh, also on Facebook here, Eduardo said he does have a convergence. It's quite fast in airplane mode. Part of the issue is the amount of throttle needed for quad flight. It's very different than what is needed for the airplane mode. Um, but what I was yeah. what I was reading though, of course, with this new mini or ultra micro convergence, is it has new software, and I'll read through here in a minute. But what we get with this multi rotor versatility, sport plane agility, takes off and lands vertically in small areas. Compact size can be flown in more places, smaller places, including indoors. Exclusive redefined flight control system makes it incredibly easy to fly. Automatic transition between multi-rotor and airplane flight. Oh, and real quick, uh, I want to take note, too, when the first conversions come out, a lot of people were under the assumption that where you could take off uh, in quadcopter or tricopter mode, go into airplane mode, and then land. But really, you can't do that. They were having issues with that. Drops. Yeah, so you really got to go back into the tricopter mode. Uh, you can't you know, land it land. like in the plane format. No, no, I guess it wasn't working too well. Wow, so, that's interesting. I actually, I, again, I haven't flown one. Because people, I could see where people would be scared to go back once you're in flight going back to the try you know the quad yeah the, the good thing is though it does Copter have like a stable stability mode so hands off if you let the controls go it should just sit there and hover it does have agility mode and you also. can hover pretty high you yeah know, comfortable to do right, that transition right right and get out of it um but i did read the manual on the old older one to, and uh just reading through it and what you had to do through all the steps i was like man i could just see myself getting confused on this uh, it does have stability and acro modes, wide flight performance, super simple transmitter setup, spectrum serial receiver, industrial leading deal. Yeah, okay. Powerful brushless. And this also, Andre, is running on the 3-cell 800. So as we just did talk about earlier, a lot of these are switching over to the 3-cell, which yep. I think is good. You're going to get a lot more flying time. That's a bigger battery. Though. Same battery. Yeah. Yep, same battery as the. I thought they said three hundred on the last. One nope, it was eight hundred. Three cell, eight hundred. For the for the little guys. Yeah. Oh, the little guy was for the F twenty seven. I believe it was. I think you said there was a no, there was a three hundred. Okay. An odd so this, is, pack this is yet another battery. Well, it's not odd. There are well, the eight hundred. I have a lot of the eight hundred. Yeah. Three hundred. Yeah. I didn't. No. Hmm. Uh, I'm going back. I'm looking real quick because I can't remember. Three cell. It's three hundred. Okay. We're telling you, yeah. All right, I believe you. I just mm -hmm. for some reason I just remember it because it was an odd number. I'm just not familiar with it. Yeah, I guess it was 300, wasn't it? And and the a lot of the other ones fly on the 280s. Is that what they were? 280s. Yes. Mm. Okay. Anyway. 280s. Oh, that one said 300 there. Which one? The last one. Was, oh, that. Okay, yeah, that was the one. I thought you were back to the convergence. No, the it says it right there in the line two under needed to complete. If you're missing it. Oh, yeah. 303 cell. Yep. You're right. Uh, so, 
you're looking at a three hundred or no, three cell eight hundred. Yeah, which is more common, I think. Hmm. Outstand, yes, outstanding speed climb aerobatic performance includes decals, trim scheme, lightweights, EPO. I, I love that all these micros are going to EPO. That is absolutely that is fantastic. Nice. Durable. And, and you're right, Andre. FPV ready. Recommended camera and video transmitter sold separately. So we're going to go look That's at the, cool. the parts list and see what it costs to get that thing. All right. I'll read a little bit about it real quick here. Um it is a VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing, usually mixed bag when it comes to performance. They are either stable, their speed and agility is often lackluster. If they are nimble, pilots have to work hard to transition between multi-rotor and airplane flight. The E-flight convergence VTOL aircraft change all that. The unique designs, exclusive flight control software give you the best of both agility and stability while making the transition between multi-rotor and airplane flight so simple and predictable that you feel comfortable and confident even on your first flight the mini e-flight convergence is more compact design than its larger counterpart you can fly at more places smaller places of course uh indoors it's quiet brushless motors re refined flight control software be really interesting once this thing gets out to see how much better it is with the with the new software um never uh let's see plus it's easier than ever to transition between multi-rotor and airplane flight outdoors mike so it's supposed to be a lot better it does say uh the airplane is provided by di differential thrust yes yes motors yes yeah I, I didn't know if it was differential thrust or if they were changing the angle. Oh, no, no. On yeah. Motors with the servos, which I didn't think they would do that. But <laughs> Yeah. And it's automated transition. So making the transition between multi-rotor and airplane flight is as simple as flipping a switch. That's to Andre's point where you're locked in one way or the other. You can't go in a high alpha, like mid. Oh, yeah, mid yeah, yeah. Transition I would think something. that would just be, uh, <laughs> That'd be too bad. Wide. <laughs> bad. Oh, but, but the, you know, the, the fly, the fly in hot to your landing zone and just hit the switch. That would be cool. Land, yeah. You know? That right. would be cool if you yeah. could do it, but I bet it's one of those slow down. Uh, yeah. yeah. Shutter, 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 and then land. Yeah. That's but exactly I mean, I what it's going to do. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe they went small because the system is more stable with the smaller size. But, uh, you know, compared to the large one, there's a lot more mass to try and slow down. And we, I'm wondering if they, you know, they just, they found with the small one, they, they can get rid of that ground effect oscillation. Remember, like, I mean, some of the early KK2 boards, oh, right? Yeah, you, like, yeah, you come in and you go to slow down. down. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, so. Um, so you know what I want to do? I you know what I have? So I I have the runaway APM quad. I've got all those motors, all those DT seven fifties. Oh four yeah. Point. Uh, you know, I want to take those and make a four motor with with the tilt mechanism. You know, so I just got to find the right mechanism. I got a bunch of nice metal servos. I'd use metal servos, not nylons. Uh, and you know, just make this beast of a transport thing that just can can come in and switch between the two modes. Probably mm -hmm. work on a KK two board to be honest. Yeah. That's my next project. After I've learned I shouldn't I even say KK2 when I'm around <laughs> Chad. I mean, it, you get laughed out of the room real quick. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, speaking of Chad, we're after, we have have not oh, had yeah. Chad Capper on since we and switched over. That's what I'll discuss a little later after you're talking about yeah. the new products is I got to watch David's bicopter. Yep. Oh, we're definitely going to so discuss that. Just so our that. listeners know we'll be talking about that. I'm going to get a hold of Chad and see if we can I get agree. him on the show. I agree because I have a lot of, like, good good stuff to tease him about. <laughs> dirt a lot of it, dirt not dirt oh okay really, but stuff to tease about yeah uh anyway boy we get off track quick sorry right? yes uh the automated transition the transition between multi-rotor and airplane is as simple as flipping a switch the flight controller will smoothly rotate the two wing mounted servos into the correct positions and activate the rear motor as needed and of course, the two flight modes, easy to use stability and acro modes deliver a wide range of performance. In stability mode, it will limit your pitch and bank angles and work to keep the aircraft uh, level when you release the sticks. This allows you to take off and land like a pro even if you've never flown a multi-rotor. The plane flight stability will limit pitch and bank angles and automatically return the aircraft to level when the sticks are released. In acro mode, there are no angle limits self or self-leveling. You know, I kind of like, me personally, it'd be nice that even in acro mode, when you let go of the sticks, that it would go to level but still uh, not limit you to your bank. 
angles. Just so if you're flying acro and you got in trouble, you let go of the sticks and it would go. You know what I mean? That's just me, though. Uh, let's see. The Mini Convergence will handle like a conventional multi-rotor aircraft that pitches and banks in whatever direction you want it to fly. It can even flip and roll. Ooh, hear that, Mike? Flip and roll like other multi -craft. Let's buy, let's buy one. We'll compare it to the Mini Tri. <laughs> in flight mode, uh, acro mode lets you perform a wide range of aerobatic maneuvers, including loops, rolls, and more. Uh, if you have a Spectrum radio, buy and fly basic version can be flown. Oh, uh, can be flown with any full range six channel Spectrum radio. No complex tra transmitter setup or programming is required. Your gear switch is used for selecting stability in acro mode, and your auxiliary one switch is used for transition from multi-rotor to airplane mode. And then you can also, it comes with different decals, you can uh, choose your own trim scheme. Ah, first person view ready. Uh, you can get it with the camera. It looks like a little kit pack. There. FPV camera and VTX sold separately. So out of curiosity, yeah. let's go up here. We're going to click on... It's probably on. the same kit they use in all their planes, yeah. Uh, I was just going to see if I could pull up the... See what it costs. Um, I don't see it on here yet. Oh, well. Completion guide. Let me see if it's in here. Uh, charge adapter. Nope. Yeah, so you're probably looking at... I'm guessing like... Oh, right here. FPV camera for off the Torrent 110. 20 bucks. bucks. Yeah, $19. So and that's that not plugs bad. In pretty easily. So I wonder where you where where the can where you're gonna put the camera on that thing though. Just have to tape it on the nose or something, I guess. Hmm? I don't know. All right, moving on. Any other questions? Anything uh, from the conversions? I don't think we're good. Now, when Next. you get that when you get yep. that camera, does that actually will that transmit the video to your goggles or how's that? Or do you have to get? I a think you have to get a transmitter. transmitter. I think it's very. It's probably the same equipment they use yeah, on. Yeah, um, uh, actually, I wonder if they have it built in. That's because what I was it wondering. just has a video pin. It could probably be very much like the um, stuff that's sitting on the Inductrix Pro right now. Because you pop the camera off the board. So. Oh, that's right. No, it's all built in in one little unit. Really? Yeah. Yeah, and you just plug plug it into the board and go. Ah, oh, that'd be nice. Yeah. And that's why I was wondering. You don't need a transmitter. Or anything. No, no, no. I think Fat Shark had those little ones too, where that was all built. Yes, I think you're right. Uh, Aaron says, Aaron "Nope, says it's, it's a separate yeah. board." Separate board. Yeah. Ah. So at that point, go out and buy a different. Book. Go out and buy your, you know, another camera and just, you know, hack a whole, hack some foam and put it in. Right, That's right. Cheaper. <laughs> okay, Andre, we're going to move on and talk a little FMS uh, nice. and some jets, since this is right up your alley. And of course, mm, I um, saw that one. That was was that one was on my radar, but it didn't show up in time. Ah, I see. So you were looking at this. Okay, I, people. Uh, look. Uh, first thing I noticed right off the bat, looking at this, and I know a lot of companies have been doing this lately, even on their bigger stuff and these jets. There's no pilot figure in there, and you're looking at right now at this beautiful jet. I'm looking at it. It's in the air. Beautiful <laughs> shot, and this is this clear canopy. Like nobody's. I don't nobody's get it. Home. Yeah. Put a pilot figure in there. I'll pay the extra $2 to throw some cheesy pilot guy in there. You know what I mean? <laughs> Come on. Yes. I don't yeah. understand. It's not like you need like the facial detail. No. Stuff, you, you could just put a helmet yes. on him and it's smooth. Yes. And not much detail. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's irritating to me. Anyway, what we're looking at here is the FMS T45 70 millimeter EDF jet. And this is something new. Beautiful looking jet. Red in white easily assembly can be completed in less than an hour six channel control including electric retracts high quality predator 70 amp esc powerful 1850 kv in runner brushless motor high thrust and this one has the 12 blade edf so it's going to sound really cool cnc machined shock absorbing landing gear which seems to be most of these bigger jets are going to as yeah. andre has found out fully functional flaps Eight digital Metal Gear servos installed, functional rudder and nose wheel steering, latch hap or latch type canopy hatch, fast field assembly with a dedicated wing servo connector system, and runs on a 3300 six cell LiPo battery. Uh, mm -hmm. 
Let me get you some, see if they have any specs on this thing. Approximate flight time, four minutes. That's plenty for a jet, so you can <laughs> land and uh, collect your thoughts and change your pants. <laughs> <laughs> what was the price I've missed? Uh, two sixty nine. That's not too bad for what you're getting in a in a good size seventy millimeter jet. I don't think is that that's yeah. pretty good, huh? And, and and the the FMS EDF motors are are the the best of the business right now. They make a nice sound and like yeah, the twelve fan. You're getting a lot of nice push. Mm -hmm. um, and and of course, this is the classic you know navy color scheme, which which you can't go wrong with. Actually, visually, it's a lot easier to track something a, a paint scheme like this. I find anyhow for me. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's nice. And the, uh, FMS just released, I've got their 70 mil yak and they actually just released a new set of landing gear, uh, going in that direction where they're, they're upgraded and everything. So they're a little bit more resi resilient. Um, but this is nice because they came out with a few other jets that, you know, were, I think the, um, oh shoot, I forget the name of it, but, um, they had a blue one, aerobatic, but it, they didn't put the flaps in. You know, they said, "Oh, you can cut your flaps in." I'm like, "Why? For the yes. cost and everything?" Put them and, you on. You know, there. just just do it. Just be done. Oh, I wonder if the uh, hook is if the hook works. I think it's just there you visually. You just stole my idea. Now wait, just stop right there. I want to talk about that in a in a second. All right, just keep that thought. Keep that thought. I want to just run through the specs real quick, and then we're going to get into yeah. that. All right. So flight time, four minutes, oh, we 70 millimeter, 12 blade fan. Listen to this though, Andre, the flying weight on this thing is 4.19 pounds or 1.90 kilograms. That is a heavy jet. Wow. <laughs> Length is uh, 1020 millimeters. Of course, it's EPO foam. Six cell 20, uh, or I'm sorry, six cell 3300 to a 4000. Nine gram digital. I'm looking for the oh wingspan. Here we go. Thirty eight point eight inches or nine hundred and sixty millimeter. These jets aren't really big. I mean, their wingspan's pretty small, but they're just big and heavy kind of thing. I don't know how to explain it, but you're not. You know what I mean, Mike? You're not getting like you. You think of a jet and it's four pounds. This thing's going to be monstrous, but it's not really that big. But it's running on a six-cell battery. Well, that's about a yardstick wingspan, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but, I mean, for a four... I don't know. Okay, now, what Andre just bought up, because as he was talking, I see that. I'm okay. staring at this thing, and, hmm. And what this has is a removable arresting hook and ca latching canopy. Now, just like you, Andre, I was looking at this and I'm thinking, you know, we we really don't have a good place to fly these bigger jets. You know, good smooth runway. I hate taking off and landing on grass. <laughs> and I was looking at that and I'm going, has anybody tried, you know, landing on a nice runway and tried using an arrestor hook? Has that been done? Is it possible? Could you lay a small rubber fishing band line down? Fishing line? Oh, yes. Fishing line would be great. <laughs> but here's... Here's the thing, though, when that thing's That'd be coming awesome in, with our low, because we have such a small yes. length, you know, you would just come to that last little bit to stop you from hitting the curb. Right. <laughs> uh, that's funny. But uh, I, I predict carnage. I do too. <laughs> yeah, because what would happen is you would have to time that absolutely perfect to get that fishing yeah. line up to grab that hook without catching the landing gear. That would probably be almost impossible. Because my luck, I'd just catch a landing gear, which it would probably do yeah, the sure. same thing. Yeah. But can't the yeah. hooks go all the way to the ground and scrape the ground, or would that screw it up? Like where you could roll over the line, but it would still catch the line? Mm, good point, Mike. That's a very good point. It might. Your wheels, you know, if you yes. get below that midpoint on the wheel, it's going to go yes, under. Yes, you and are then, correct. And then catch the hook. That's a great point, Mike. I don't know how they conventionally work, but. Okay, Andre, we need you to buy this jet, come down but here, it... and we need to do some <laughs> testing. <laughs> Deal. Yeah, um, no kidding. Chris, Chris says It'd I'd be, be worried about be ripping test. the hook out. Now, again, it wouldn't be something you, you don't want to stop this thing dead. That's yeah, why I was thinking just towards the end of the runway. a nice thin rubber band, maybe tied to some fishing line, yeah. to where it's just going to give it a it nice gives it enough strength. Yeah, we don't want to stop this thing in a foot. Just yeah. like stop it maybe ten feet instead of fifty or whatever, yeah. or twenty feet. So it'd be nice and gradual. Now the thing would be though is you would have to hook some kind of servo uh, or something up to it. 
I don't want that thing hanging down while I'm flying, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, oh, I want yeah. to definitely yeah. be able oh, to yeah. put it up and yeah. down. And do you know off the top of your head, Andre, does any of the other jets, whether or anything, have any arresting hooks that actually move? Uh, no, I've no? never seen one actually move. The Freewing F4 has got one, but it's static. It's just a display piece. Um, so, yeah, and, and and you know, then you have to figure out how to reinforce that entire area to take that stress, you know, because well, it's... The 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 the, out, the back end of the jet is just foam in a, in a circle. There's no beef there. Yeah, uh, I think you know what. Honestly, you're better <laughs> off doing those emergency lines. You know, like the emergency gate, the, like the last when when the arresto hook system doesn't work. They oh, the nets. The oh, the nets. Yeah, the nets. nets. The nets. Yeah, that you would. Know? That maybe we got to go to that route. There, there is. That's some, our backup you know, plan when the hook doesn't work to have the nets. There's some really good comments and things we didn't think about. Fred oh, says I'm you sure. wouldn't want it, an elastic band because like yeah, it'd be shot. like a slingshot. <laughs> I don't think about that. You're right. That thing would slingshot backwards. Bill says it'd just be a front wheel arrest. <laughs> <laughs> um, the line should be attached to some heavy sandbags, is what for, I don't know about that either. We somehow you got you got to have some give. I don't know how, whether maybe somebody would have to hold that and just let that. Yeah, just, just have Mike hold the line, you know, so you can stand <laughs> in the line. Of yeah. Yeah. No, thanks. <laughs> uh, and, and, and to that end, that means you have to get yourself in landing within a 10-foot window, you know, which is probably okay. Yeah, it wouldn't even yeah. have to be 10. We're even 20. Like, yeah, we, you could make okay, the string 20? as long as you want if you got the right Yeah, mechanism. because we got probably – how long do you think that parking lot oh, is? Oh, we got lots of width. It's the well, length. Well, it's the length, but how? What, what's the length? Probably 100 – no, not even 100. Probably between 50 and 70 somewhere. I'd say like 50 to 70 yards. Yeah. Like 50 yards, probably 70 feet. So if we like if that. we got it landed in 50 feet, that, that would be perfect. Um, Victor says the curb make great brakes. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> That's uh, very true. Hard, gotcha. hard on the nose a little bit, but yeah. Well, we could just get Chris's dog. You know, bite catch the tail. <laughs> yeah, he, he'd be good at that. Uh, but but Stamp says uh, you have to make sure that the hook didn't bounce and stayed on the runway. That's another kind of good oh, yeah. point. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. It'd still be fun to try that. I just think that would be a blast. Well, you put tension on the hook to scrape. I think you'd keep it scraping. Well, maybe. that'd be the other thing. If, that if would you slide had, it down, you drill that tail down. If you had a servo, though, and that thing, I don't know how, it would almost have to have some kind of spring. Yeah, or something. Because if you're coming down and, and your little nose high and that hook hits first and then sets down, you still want it to be able to Give. touch the pavement. Yeah. So you would ha definitely have to have some kind of spring on that thing. To keep it just keep nice it, tension, yes. a certain amount of tension. So, so you're ground. adding like a five pound piece of weight to your tail. <laughs> yeah, you know, in all honesty, uh, just just for fun out. though, you know, if, if something you're going to do, you wouldn't even really have to put a servo on. If you you know let it let the thing hang down, just put some kind of spring on it for some tension, and just try it, just to see if you can get it to work. I think that would be a blast. My luck, I'd go over a little pothole. <laughs> they would dig it stop it instantly rip yeah. the tail off yeah and uh ryan ryan paps it was just like you said you need something uh to keep the fishing line off the ground but low enough to have the wheels roll over it that's it, that's exactly it um <laughs> martin says we need a little pulley system with rubber bands or a weak bungee cord mm -hmm. and of course and then fred's getting uh big time here we needed some um uh, like a parachute or something behind it that that would be cool too uh <laughs> aaron says stand by with the scissors and time it perfectly <laughs> uh, oh okay fred made a good point kind of like you need some kind of small bean bag it's heavy enough to drag but it would slide and give it some give that yeah. would that's a good idea that's what some, he meant with the same yeah, yeah yeah like uh some cornhole bags or yeah some, yeah that might yeah. work good yeah that would do oh this yeah. is, these are great ideas you know you know what aircraft you could test this with though chris you could probably test this with the bush mule yeah you'd have to make up uh yeah some kind of arrestor hook or something put it on the you uh got you could put it right on they the hatch big door. enough tires you could drive over the line easy enough yeah too. And we know it taxis yeah, fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. 
taxi is ridiculous. Yeah, like that uh, I wore out a whole set of tires and rims just on taxi. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, I guess we. So there you have the the T forty five FMS uh, jet seventy millimeter. Really, really nice looking jet. Just looking plane. I want to look. I want to glance through some of the pictures here a little bit. Would you fly that, Mike? You like no, that? No. no. I mean, yes, I love. I love oh. it. But my ability level, I'd be. Oh my gosh. I'd be hey, look. Panic. There's a close up picture yeah. of the arrestor hook. Check that out. I'm gonna put it up on the big screen. So yeah, you could take that and just put uh, some kind of spring on there. And I don't think that frame's designed for that. That usage, bro. You don't think? I think it's fine. <laughs> I think we. Would, I think it would be fine, Mike. I really do. Okay. You hear this? You hear this loud pop? As yeah, the I think you're just gonna see by, what, right? what what was depicted there. That's what's gonna be laying on the pavement. <laughs> <laughs> the plane's gonna keep so, going. So, so while we're looking at uh, looking at some of the parts and everything, uh, Aaron Crosby asks why. Uh, Still curious why none of the jets have AS3 access slit sash slash. I can't talk safe, and you know, um, to be honest, I, I they haven't. Um, uh, I don't think Horizon's done a jet in a really long time. I mean, they've got the Habu, they mm -hmm. had the little A10, but they haven't touched uh, a proper jet frame in the full size, you know, 1100 millimeter size, the E flight size, in a really, really long time. I was time. thinking by the time I hit the oh crap button, it'd be too late on a jet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you want me to do right? yeah, uh, that is a good question that, that, i i don't know why horizon hasn't brought out safe. uh any any it jets, jets. with them safe I, that's really that strange Jeez, yeah, maybe up. maybe maybe that's something they're gonna work on next because they've been going around in circles well, and doing some neat you stuff. you know what they're probably thinking yeah. jets aren't beginner planes you want the AS3X for beginners and intermediate pilots. Why, if you're going to the jet route, you better have your your A game on to begin with. So maybe that's why they're not they don't put them in. Yeah, I'm and, not and saying it would hurt anything, but I don't know if advanced it pilots would need it necessarily. You know, that's probably why they haven't looked at it. But who knows? That's just my well, guess. Well, the, uh, the the big the big thing I bought there has the Aurora 8, and the stabilizer works great in that, but the nice thing is you can choose your own flavor. Most of the guys who fly jets at this point, will, you know, they've got their preferred receiver too. Um, but it would be nice to see uh, Horizon to come back with, you know, their take on a jet. I mean, they've done a couple fast planes recently, so it would be yeah. interesting. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Uh, anything else on that, or we'll move on? We're Move gonna, it all. Moving on. Moving on. Next thing, which I've been trying, trying to find it, and I'll just have to go to the uh, our Facebook page and pull up Andre's post. But the next thing we want to talk about real quick here is the FMS 1400 J3 Cub V3 uh, that you posted here. And, of course. Hold on. I'll get the direct link. It's it's off the FMS site. FMSmodel.com. Hold on here. New planes. There it is there. That's a nice looking plane too. I love the Swiss colors for whatever reason. Right, Frank? <laughs> Here you go. Here's the link. All right, I, I got it pulled up now off the Facebook page. Um, yep. So, fourteen hundred millimeter, fifty five point one inch J three Cub V three. And yeah, Andre, I totally agree. The uh, red, white, and Swiss colors. Uh, beautiful looking airplane. Hundred and eighty nine dollars, Mike. That's a good price for that size airframe. Uh, let me see here. Full size counterpart is a new FMS 1400 J3 V3 has excellent short field takeoff and landing, slow speed handling characteristics. FMS has dedicated significant amount of resources in making the aircraft as detailed as possible. Components such as the engine and landing gear, among many others, are replicated in loving detail. Something worth noting is that FMS has made scale floats for the Cub as a response to popular demand from the community. To mix things up, FMS has selected an attractive, historically accurate red, white, and paint scheme for the V3. Not all J3s were yellow. That's very true. For pilots looking for easy-to-fly scale aircraft, gentle, gentle trainer characteristics, plenty of power, grateful lines, and golden age of flight. The FMS J3 V3 is all that you need. And we have a 3536 850 kV motor, Predator 40 amp ESC, highly detailed scale engine landing gear, EPO construction, optional scale floats. So I take it the floats do not come 
with the J3, but they're optional. You could buy them. I'm trying to find out here real quick. Hey, it has a pilot. It has a pilot. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, but beautiful looking airplane with the the scale looking engine. Uh, a I lot wonder of, what the size is comparable. Is it bigger than a Tundra? Smaller than a Timber? Bigger than it's a what did I say? Fifty fifty five inch. A, so it's I don't know what our size just, of those planes are, but just. A little bit bigger than the Tundra and just a hair smaller than so the... Between. Yeah, in, in between. between the two. I was wondering that. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can get some more details here a little bit. I was trying to find battery. I'm assuming it flies on a 3 It's cell. a 3S. 3S. It's a 3S. Yeah, which is, you know, a lot of the FMS planes lately were, were in the 4S, but 3S2200, 25C. Oh, wow. So it's probably, yeah, it's, you know, it's up there with, uh, you know, wingspan of 1,400 millimeters. So Your mm -hmm. common battery it's, pack it's, then, or that we started. Yeah, with. and it's, you know, it's in, it's in the same, it's slightly smaller. I guess it's more aligned with the Sport Cub, mm -hmm. Chris, um, for wing size. Bigger than the Sport Cub, I believe. Yeah, that's true. So it's in between. It's 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 sitting right in there between the uh, the tundra, the timber, and everything. Yes, yes. I think I want to say the landing gear comes with it because there's a photo in the um, the literature that shows everything, and it even has a painted pilot, folks. Wow. I wonder what the wheels are like. Well, hey. the wheels are really small. They look small. Yeah. Um, I'm going through some specs Is here that for a little scale, bit. Scale probably. I see. Uh, 11 by 7 prop. I don't know. You found the battery. I didn't see that. Okay. Right there, 11, oh, yeah. It does come. Uh, looking at the pictures, it does come with floats. Mm hmm So. Now. It's, it's small, a, the it's smaller really nice tires don't thing. appeal to me. Honestly. No. But, again, they're they're making a, a scale cub. And I do you know how easy it would be to pull those wheels off and, say, put, put some Tundra, tundra tires on yeah. that thing? You know? Yeah. As long as it doesn't but again, it does struts. <laughs> I don't think you know on, on the right grass this wouldn't be a problem, but on a, on a thick yeah on a on a on a more sticky is it, ground is or if it's wet, floats. I'm looking. Uh, I, yeah, in one photo they've got a rudder on it on the uh, yes on the left, on the left okay. side they've got one so yep. very very similar to your timber. Yep. Yep. So beautiful looking airplane. It is pretty. Looking through here, it looks like it breaks down pretty easy. I, I like was... it better than the yellow. Oh, for sure. Trying to see if the wing. Oh, it looks got little screws in the wing, so you could just unscrew those and pull the wings apart. It looks like inside. Yeah, it doesn't have flaps. Oh well, re the regular Cub doesn't have flaps. Well, there you go. That's yeah. why. So sweet, sweet. I'm. Uh, yeah, that's, that's looks great in the air from all the pictures and everything. The uh, so with gear uh, with gear okay so with floats it's twenty dollars more so oh, big like two oh two two twenty mm -hmm. that scale uh, floats would be worth it oh for sure there it is on floats Mike if you can see that mm -hmm. it is nice and it has our pilot figure um yeah so there it is the FMS J three Cub V three nice, nice looking plane yep. Okay, moving on again. Mm -hmm. uh, let's let's jump over to motion. We haven't talked with those guys or talked too much about some planes or anything. So I was going on their site, checking some things out, and they got a couple, not oh. brand brand new uh, stuff, but they got some new versions out. That's a sweet shot. Isn't that cool? It almost looks like it's beat or um, break doing the sound barrier cone <laughs> or something. Uh, I'll go through some pictures. The air cone. First thing I want to talk about is the Mirage 2000C V2 80 millimeter EDF jet uh, made by Freewing on Motion RC. Uh, this thing is absolutely that beautiful looks bad. looking. Bad. I mean, awesome. So, what you're getting with way. this, and this is a beast of a plane. Uh, I'll read what you're getting new on the V2. First, you're getting a dynamically balanced 9-blade EDF for balance, power, thrust, and efficiency, and sound. All new Tiger Meat decal scheme. So that's all new, Mike, that scheme right there. Uh, a new 100-amp Hobbywing ESC with a 5-amp BEC. Dig new digital Metal Gear servos for precise control during high-G maneuvers. Optional 3D-printed detail upgrade set. For cockpit, exhaust, nozzle, antennas, they're all sold separately. 
So that's what you get in the new V2. But of course, with the plane, you get the electronic retractable landing gear, metal shock absorbing, steerable shock absorbing nose gear, spring operated nose gear door, scale D2. Jeez, we can't talk today. Scale details include hand painted scale size pilot, full instrument panel, refueling probe and panel lines, carbon spars, EPL foam construction, nylon hinges, um, outrunner motor. Of course, uh, I'm trying to see what we... Okay, here we go. Six-channel radio and receiver. Uh, again, six-cell, 4,000 LiPo battery. It seems like, Andre, all these bigger jets are just going right all to four-cell now. Six-cell? Six-cell. What I say? Four. four? What an idiot. Yeah, all six-cell, Andre. Hello? Did we lose him? I think so. Did we lose Andre? Sounds like it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, he oh he left his chair. Uh, He's still there. He must be something busted. Going on. Yeah, way to go. You're busted. <laughs> no potty breaks here. Yeah, buddy. no potty <laughs> breaks, Andre. What do you think this is? Uh, uh, we're just talking about the Mirage here, the V2, what they did, uh, all the new features, and we were just saying that it seems like all these new jets now are all six cell. There's no way to really get around or get away from the six cell. So. No, no, they're, uh, you need the power, you need the weight, or not even the weight, you just need the, uh, yeah, they can't, uh, especially when you get in the 80 millimeters, uh, there's just, there's no way they can sustain that kind of pressure or power requirements, so, mm-hmm. and that means, of course, if you step into the six cell, you've got to make sure your charge system is up to snuff and everything, and then you're, yeah, you're looking at a pretty nice airplane, and then you're looking at considerable cost on the batteries, but it, you know, it's worth it if this is where you want to go. It is fun. They they they're terrifying. It's a, it's a different type of flying, but you get there and you're like, uh, okay, you know, mm-hmm. panic, 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 enjoy, and then you land and go, okay, let's do that again. You know? Um, and really for what you're getting, eighty millimeter jets, three hundred bucks. That's that's not too bad. And for that, you're getting a thirty one. And again, think about this. It's only a thirty one inch wingspan, Mike. That's crazy yes. to me. And the flying uh, I just, weight I, there's is, no way I could fly 300 bucks and not be like just beside myself. And the flying weight <laughs> is 78 ounces. Man, that's crazy. Um, but I wanted to show you, Mike, here. Uh, let's go through these pictures. What's really cool, I mean, the jet itself uh, is beautiful. But now I wanted to show you, you can upgrade with these 3D printed parts. Like, look at that jet exhaust. Oh, wow. The rivets and everything. Oh, it's so cool. It's yeah. got like the black exhaust on the inside. Then you can go to the uh, the the canopy. De- oh, look at the wow. detail on that cockpit. I- I'll put it on the big screen, but you're probably not going to really be able to see it that well up there. You can view larger yeah. images on there if you click. Uh oh, okay. Let's see try that. Does. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger, but I'll put it up there and see. Uh, so that you know, you can get the exhaust uh, with the. Uh, that is really cool looking, though, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Really detailed. The photo. Whoever did this. Plane photo wise and everything did a really oh, good job. Man, Look I'll at that say. thing. And here, here's what I like. Yeah, Look at this one. one. That one Taking off with the dust and everything blown. That looks almost real, right yeah, there. Yeah, that does look sweet. And the shape of a mirage. The way Look it's at just, that triangular wing yeah. like that. Yeah. That is a sweet looking plane. <laughs> Fred makes an excellent point. He said, I used to think $300 in the air was out of the question until I started flying quads. He's got a good point there. You get into the racing quads and you want something really good, you're talking five, six, seven hundred dollars. Yeah. And now they're starting to fly on six S packs as well. Yeah. But those frames are more durable than than that frame would be, I would think. Yeah, that's a good point. Well they got such durable frames now with quads. And here's the thing. That thing's gonna be in a million pieces if you hit hard on it. And here's the thing. How many batteries you could buy for a three hundred dollar yeah, quad versus the six? The six. Yeah, the six cell. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna have more. You're gonna have more in batteries to fly this jet than you are. You're gonna have more in pieces. <laughs> That's all I can see. <laughs> oh, Mike, you kill me. Uh, yeah. So anyway, that's the Mirage 2000 V2. Really cool looking airplane. And the other one I wanted to talk about, Andre. Oh, that the one that that's what broke my heart the most. Which man. one? That, that was like uh, the, the you're going for the six two six. Yes. Uh, I was so you know like this is the one I was waiting for, and it didn't come out. It came out too late because this is what I was waiting for from them. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I have a soft spot for the six two six in my heart. Me definitely. too. Me and too. Uh, you know, it just it just took too long. Is it and you know, this is the one I would. Uh, two six two. Oh, he said it backwards. This oh. is the one I would have come home with. Um, you know, from Ohio versus the flex jet, if it had been available. Really, I did not yes. know that. Look at this, Mike. That looks yes. cool. See, I don't see it. You don't like My it. My heart is not into See, that. I'm a huge World War II airplane buff. I love Bingo. German. I love German yeah, airplanes. So this that looks goofy to me. Oh, this is so <laughs> cool. This is like a oh, going oh, back in time. It looks goofy to me. I, well, of course, yeah, it does compare to normal <laughs> no, jets I mean, nowadays. Just, yeah, I don't. I but don't to know. fly something like this, you know, from World War II and the German scheme with them big ugly motors hanging off of it. Ah, oh, it's just. <laughs> See, you even said ugly. <laughs> it's. I <laughs> just like it, <laughs> and it has a pilot figure. <laughs> Oh, if I they would, didn't put a pilot figure in a World War II, you know, I, I, w- I would come unglued. It's definitely different, but I just don't see the You lines. don't like it? Yeah. Oh, man. Beautiful. See, Andre agrees with me. Just beautiful. It's like a bullfrog. Look at that I, thing. Oh, I, and what was worse, I priced it to ship it to Canada, and it's terrifying. It's oh, terrifying. Yeah. It's the Oh, you know, it's uh that one that that plane and like something like the A ten is over it's approaching a hundred dollars US to ship. I just I'm wow. like I can't do it. I cannot do it. Like the shipping costs and everything are just too high for my uh my comfort zone. Now wh- I wonder why is the Mirage like it was going for three hundred and this one's three fifty nine. Wonder if just because it's uh I don't know why. It's a 70. They're twins. Well, it's a twin 70 mil. Oh, yeah. You got to uh, pay for the This extra. one has the, – they, they upgraded the power system last year, and then they did the paint job on it. So, mm. you know, it's just a different kind of bird. Yeah. Uh, but if you, if I had to pick between the two of them, that's the one I would go for, the six two, uh, the 262. Mm. 626. Huh, that's funny. I must be thinking about Mazda's. <laughs> um, you know, 262, uh, yeah. And what and what you – know, go ahead. No, I was just saying, I just I just like the look of it. A couple of the guys have a few of the different ones here. That uh, I think one's got the free wing. I've seen the Dynam and I've seen the free wing fly, and they're just neat aircraft. Now, my big problem with this type of aircraft is I know I'm going to do all kinds of damage to the bottom of those skids coming and landing because I'm a terrible landing, mm-hmm. uh, a terrible at landing. But they've got plastic intakes and they've got skid protectors along the bottom of the uh, the nacelles to protect them. So, really. Uh, yeah, to find a yeah, and of the Stewart, here. Stewart did a video for motion. It was kind of fun. He uh, oh, he, he dead sticked right. one, In, put it into the put it into the creek. That's right. Uh, sorry, I was taking a swig of coffee there. All right, so what you're getting new on this version two is you're getting the new iconic yellow seven paint scheme. Upgrade. And I like the new colors. I do yeah. too. Oh, Absolutely. The, the previous color was too, it was too gray. Too much yes. gray on a jet. I don't like gray jets. Yes, I, I totally agree. Um, you're getting 3048 2150 KV brushless outrun outrunner motors. New twin again. Listen, 12 blade, 70 millimeter EDF with metal housing for high speed maneuvers and realistic jet turbines. I bet that thing sounds awesome. Twin 70, Mike, with 12. Yeah. Oh, see, you're getting it <laughs> no, now. No. Yeah, you're getting it you, now. They'd have to get me past the looks, the sound. So that's what you, basically what <sighs> you're getting, getting new. Pink. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, somebody made a comment. Uh, where was it earlier? Uh, they said we should try these the doing that with the Sky Sword, but catching it. Oh, gosh, a pink Sky Sword. That is horrific. <laughs> <laughs> that's just horrific. <laughs> Uh, super scale yeah. feature details including cockpit, authentic graphics, engine vents, machine guns, and more. Dual 60 amp hobby wing ESCs. Mm, oh, twin EDF to thrust to reach speeds in excess of 100 miles an hour, Mike. Oh, perfect. I didn't realize that jet was that fast, Andre. <laughs> uh, holy for a couple mo- seconds. Holy moly. Do a nice low speed. 100 with mile an hour sound, pass with, with that. that oh, oh, dude, oh, I'm in love. <laughs> Split flaps for shorter takeoffs and slower. We need an arrestor hook on this. So you <laughs> buy one and fly it. <laughs> Nylon hinges on all control surfaces. Crash resistant EPO foam. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, like how you blow yeah. past that statement. And again, six cell. Uh, this one's uh, 5,000 milliamp battery on this one. Six cell. 
And I like I like the size on this one a little better. It's fifty nine inches. At least I feel like it's gonna. Yeah, you. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, but it's heavy, man. One hundred and two ounces. Yeesh. Wow. Uh, that's about it for that. But oh man, I, that thing to me. Oh oh. That see, yeah <laughs> that that one. It's funny because like I, I like the hawk style jets, obviously, because I've got two that are very similar, and, mm-hmm. and even. Uh, but this one has just been, yeah. Uh, and what was nice is flying that ninety mil told me I can handle that kind of size, size of aircraft at my field on on with the right conditions. But this one, yeah, uh, we'll see, we'll see. My and, birthday's still coming up in September. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, and. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing it'd be interesting to talk to Alpha about this also because it is basically like a regular World War II plane with engine strap, you know, EDF strapped to it. So I'm I'm guessing that it probably flies more like a, a traditional Warbird. Warbird. You know, obviously you're not going to have the propeller and, and, you know, the thrust of... So you still got to be careful. Um, but I, I'm just guessing it would maybe slow down better i could be totally wrong here i'm just guessing but oh man thing looks good Mm. well i mean i've watched uh you know like mike uh who we had on the you know pilot mike and ryan captain ryan or whatever did i get that right yes Yes. (laughs) Uh, and they they had it out and you know they were doing off the grass and everything and slowing it down and it's got a really nice envelope it's a really good uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it will do the job. So mm-hmm. look at that, Mike sitting there, got the guns out the front of the nose. Yeah. I'm not sold on that. One. Oh, that thing's beautiful. Absolutely. Beautiful. Fred said, if I knew the history and what was put into it, I'd probably enjoy it more. Maybe it's it like, like honestly, Mike, if, if this aircraft had come along a little bit sooner, in the in the war, I don't think the the Allies would have had the success because it yeah. was oh, it was a game changer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, it's a jet versus a P fifty one, you know, yeah. and a P forty, right? Yeah. So, you know, they had to really work to shoot those things down. <laughs> yeah. But, and and look know, and look look what happened after the war, and we stole all the German engineering and the jets just uh, after the World War Two. Yeah. yeah. They just took off yep. because we stole all their engineers from over there. Wow, so yeah. there, so I, I, we'll see, man. I tried, I tried to trade for one of them, but no one would would take on it. So we'll, we'll see, man. I'll let you know what happens later on in the fall. I'm trying to think what six cell batteries I have six cell five thousands too, because that that's yeah. what I'm running in the the Cub. So yeah, that'd be perfect. Yep. Mm. Yep. Mm. Mm-hmm. Maybe they'll send one to Chloe. <laughs> we'll borrow hers. Uh, okay. Uh, moving on, next thing I want to talk about, and Mike, you got a little bit more information on it, and I could probably try to pull something up. Uh, we want to talk about David Vindenstall's bicopter because they are actually out and selling it. I didn't it. go to the store, but I saw that they were going to be at store, in the, the store. Uh, they're on, the um, was it Buckstamp? He's got them. He's on pre-release. Where did he say they were RCX. on? They're on Black, um, oh, phooey. What's, oh losing my mind let me go through and see there but anyway mike tell yeah. us a little bit about it because you well, were there i kind of i forced my presence on the shoot that they did in the last video that they released uh showcasing his bicopter mm-hmm. and his mini tri or baby tricopter i'm sure but i was so glad to just to be in the background it was so such a good evening that that day um i asked chad if he minds because david was going to be heading back i think the following day and mm-hmm. i wanted to hang out with him as much as possible while he's here for flight fest so after work, I go out there, and uh, he's like, well, we're doing a shoot. And I'm like, "That if you don't care, I'll just hang back, you know, and just watch the shoot go down. And, and I I had a blast. So basically, they had uh, Drew Camden. He's mm-hmm. a rotor riot pilot, yeah. an expert quad pilot for freestyle. Right. And, and there uh, is there is a video. I watched David's it's video. Awesome. I watched yeah. it, too. And mm-hmm. Chad put, shared it on Facebook or what have you. But um, And that's the video I was watching in person and it was cool because he kind of explained how his tricopters were before the quads you know you had your large quad frames in the video because the escs couldn't respond quick enough 
So you, everything was bigger before they got into the race racing scene and mm -hmm. stuff with them. And then the ESCs came back and were able to process the information better for more stability control and everything like that. And then the tris, tricopters kind of went away. But the idea of the tricopter is you didn't need ESC authority. The servo took care yes. of the yaw and stuff. Mm -hmm. So you had stability there. You could go smaller and... and and it was just it was it was it was a better technology for that time when ESCs couldn't do anything about it. Right. So, um, but then as ESCs come along, then the quad. He, he you watch the video. It, they they explain it better than I I can. But it, it's pretty cool. And now, so he talked about his baby tri. And he had Drew Camden. He's like, I never had a professional quad pilot fly my baby tri. Yeah. And it was so much fun watching Drew try to handle this different format of flying. And, and you could tell it was a challenge for him, but he, he really did like flying it. And it had plenty of punch for him and stuff. And in the video, he does a dive by the cell tower with the tricopter. And he almost hits, they, he didn't realize they put attachments on the side. I've seen that, And yeah. he goes blazing by that thing. And my cousin's like, what was that? <laughs> He's like, when did they put those on? And they almost got removed. So that was a pretty funny scene to see that. And uh, so then he gives them uh, the bicopter, and this was his prototype. And we, I saw it a little bit, the bicopter. He was trying to mess with different um, settings or yeah. configurations on it to try to smooth things out right before the shoot. Mm -hmm. Well, they could fly it forward easy enough, but if you watch the video going backwards, it needed some refinement in the code because of yeah. like... Yeah, shaking. Whoa, 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 yeah. It was like going berserk. It was pretty funny, and, and Drew was... We got a kick out of that. Um but Drew was able to do some amazing things even with his bicopter. And I and I don't know where his code stands now. If he put it on the market, I assume he well, probably fought through some of that stuff and refined it. Or he's looking for people yes, to maybe fix yes, that part of that's it. That's exactly you. Yeah, and, but the, but, but, and talking to David the other day, uh, he said they did clean up that code. He awesome. says, so some of the some of the well, some oscillating of the has already that, been yeah. sorted out already. I figured it already. was. I figured it probably was mm -hmm. for him to put it on the market. It, it looks really sweet, and we got it up here, but with a bicopter, you have to have servos on both mm -hmm. propellers, you know, mm -hmm. to control, have control authority, so mm -hmm. it's pretty cool, I, I, I will say, and it, it's just, it's another way to keep people inspired and maybe being creative exactly. in the field and not get stuck with exactly. your quads, I mean... Yes, it's going to fly different, but it's another challenge, and, and there's there's potential and possibilities there maybe we haven't achieved yet, and that's what they were kind of going at with this video, like, keep, keep being creative, because yeah. you never know what you're going to stumble right. across right. in yeah. a genius idea or something that might take off. Right, you know? and and the cool thing was, you know, when, when he brought out the uh, the mini tricopter, like, when it first came out, he was having a lot of issues with that, and uh -huh. it went through refinement after refinement. And people, after... the community helped build yeah. the code, you keep it open frame, and it, it, with the coding and stuff and and you get all these ingenious uh because he even in me he's like programming may not be my thing but yeah. there's people out yes. there that they're specialized and can fix these issues i'm struggling with with some ease so right. and you know they finally got that mini try down to where it is uh, unbelievable and i and i flew it that evening by myself they were getting ready to go eat and i uh -huh. joined them eating that evening too and i absolutely had a blast hanging out with those guys it was jeff ward Orta, um, Drew Camden, Chad, of course, and mm -hmm. just hanging out. It was like it's kind of like the old flight te flight. Oh test yeah, days feeling just hanging yeah. out in his garage. Yeah. And, oh my gosh, it took me back. I just absolutely had a blast that evening, and I was glad he left me um, come to attend that video shoot. Mm -hmm. So just so everyone knows, right now it is on the Team Black Sheep website, and also of course it is on RC Explorer uh, dot net. They mentioned maybe oh, I'm sorry. a riot group, but I don't. I didn't look at their shop. I'm sorry. RCExplorer.se. Yes. RCExplorer.se. Yes. And it is on pre-order right now. You can get the bundle with the F3 FC Racing and PDB bundle for 112, or you can buy just the copter itself. Um, let's see if there's anything he else. He was trying to do to... this tight cone maneuver, which. It, I'm sure it can do. And then mm -hmm. he did a uh, roll with it, I think. He did some pretty amazing feats being new to that frame. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Drew did. <laughs> He's, I love Dave. He says, just picture yourself rolling up to your flying buddies and whipping this thing out. <laughs> 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 Guaranteed instant plus 10 to street cred and coolness. Which, it, I mean, just the, the way it looks, it's awesome. Like the, the back end has all these fins hanging off of it. It almost kind of looks like a shark or something. It's really cool looking. They kind of got a tick or 
a chuckle out of my play on words because I said try. He had the try and the buy. Uh, I said try, buy, and fly. B U I and T R Y. He says a sharp looking. Uh, not only looks like a formidable stabbing weapon, it also <laughs> makes the copter fly better. The weight is distributed more evenly, and the leverage arm is longer, which should make the pitch access more stable. He says, "This thing is a challenge. Are you up for it? It's crazy. It's this thing is not like a crazy locked-in quadcopter that obeys your every command. No." You have to fly this thing the way it wants to be <laughs> flown. It is not easy and will take some getting used to. Tuning is tricky, fid fiddly, and might vary greatly depending on the electronics used. Pre-tuned PIDs are available for the recommended electronics kit. You can get yourself into weird situations very quickly, and it currently doesn't like flying backwards. This is actually kind of funny. <laughs> What it does like is forward flight, both slow and flat out, lazy turns and hovering as long as it's not drifting backwards. You can do tricks as well, but be ready for some fun recovery <laughs> maneuvers. It is very different flying experience compared to most other I think quads. even since he's typed us, like like Andre said, just recently oh, yeah. talking to him, the backward drift or the flights, they they I would be I would love to keep up to date on it because it's going to constantly get better and better, I think. Mm-hmm knowing him and his community. So, yeah, he goes on and, and talks a little bit more about it. And, and like he says, luckily they have an awesome community. The community has been able to improve the tricopter code so much that it went from feeling like flying a wet eel to a homing missile. <laughs> David's words are hilarious. It says, together we can explore what is possible to improve the flight envelope of bicopters as well. Jump over to the forums and share your experience. It is a highly it is highly recommended to use the special position feedback servos. They will most likely increase performance vastly once the feature is implemented into the firmware. Did you watch mm -hmm. the video, the whole video towards the end, like the at the blooper reel at the end and stuff? Yes, I did watch there, it. I think it was even before the blooper reel, but the word he used to describe Drew, like oh, they yeah. were doing this awkward hug at the end, and Chad's like, What are you guys doing? Yeah. And, and he's like, That Drew, he's a He's a hoot. Yeah. <laughs> I did I watch it. I was I'm like, I haven't heard that term yeah. used that way. And the way he expresses it, I was rolling. I'm like, that is so funny. You're a real hoot. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, to, to put it into perspective, yeah. it's you can buy a mini convergence or you can buy a bicopter. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, if I had, you know, if I have my pick, you know where it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Let's get Andre back up here. Yeah. So, yeah, no. for all you techies out there, or if you're just looking for something a little different, something that you take to the flying field or show up with your buddies and go, what the heck is that? Because we had the same thing with the, the Mini Tri. Every time we pulled that thing out somewhere or we took it or you were flying it, everybody stopped watched it because of the sound it's different it flies different it looks different oh and drew is having a real hard time like what we first did when you go back and yeah just looking at the skyline the whole time with a quad it's he's like i was looking at the ground more yep. this is like you're looking in the air he was way thrown off same th kind of feel we got with it you know? right it's a whole different experience and i i kind of wish you know, I know Dave has been busy working on other things, and he's got his his knife out now and and everything. But I really wish he would go back to the tricopter stuff and work a little bit more, or maybe maybe come back to the the baby tricopter. I don't know. Well, it seems like he's got the baby dialed in pretty good. Yeah, now, I would so. just like to see a little bit more tricopter stuff. I just love how this folds back the arms. Oh, and I stuff agree. For compactability. I and totally stuff. agree. I that thing is an absolute. I, Dude, I, I miss mine so bad. Every time you fly mine, I almost just want to go sit in the car because I'm jealous. And when you rock it by me at 80 miles an hour with the sound of that thing, I'm like, Ugh, I don't want to hear it. It really is. So, uh, yeah, anyway. He makes a good product. This thing's going to be top notch yeah. in no time. I'll bet on it. So any tech he guys out there or you want something different, you don't mind tinkering around, check out the Biocopter. Go to rcexplorer.se. And I'd be willing to bet even not far down the road. You won't even have to tinker with it. I'll bet. I'm sure. Just like the try. I'll I'm sure. the same stage as a, and its I'm development. Sure. All right. So there you have it. The david vindenstall special i hope he does well with it uh bicopter so go check it out 
But as Chad says, I hope you sell a boatload of yeah. these things. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be neat to see once they get a stable and then, you know, you slap on some FPV and go make yourself dizzy. Because yeah. that that thing went in forward flight mode should be really quick. It's the mm. it's the um, most recent video I've watched in a long time of a new product. This is by Copter. Yeah. and I'm probably because I was there too. Uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. uh, and when he posted the when he posted the video to Facebook, I uh, I clipped in the section of you and your pine tree that you took off the top. <laughs> I didn't notice that. I did point that out to the guys. That you did? Know about See it. that I tree out there with no top? <laughs> the mini. That was the, me. That was the mini tricopter <laughs> doing that. <Copter. laughs> yeah. oh, Finley won't we're, forget that we're, one. We were watching the video. I'm like, yeah, shot that gap, shot that gap. Yeah, uh, yeah we're good. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> All right, uh, moving back. Or moving back. <laughs> moving forward. Jeez, oh whiz. What is wrong with us today? Take a week off and we can't talk. Uh, real quick, Andre, I wanted to touch on the ARF Tundra that is now out. You can get that thing. Yeah. Uh, the new colors. Uh, it has the new oh, updated. Eddie Black is watching. Oh, good. Eddie. <laughs> Eddie's good morning. Hey, Sorry Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> like your shirt, buddy. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's I all right. Cut in on that. What was I going? Oh, new wing connectors, Andre. Uh, they've changed some things mm -hmm. around um, with the new color, so that is out. If you want, if your old Tundra is just beat the heck, you know, like mine's getting pretty beat up now because we run it through the ringer. It'd be awesome. To, I'd love to go to that orange color. Um, but anyway, you posted a video on RC After Hours on the Facebook. Uh, what is his? I believe his name's Tom. Uh, and yep. He got the new ARF, and he just went through a few things. Um, you know, how to make it better if you want to try some different things. Now, one thing I want to mention is he kind of tears it apart, changes out all the servos. He goes with the TSS 11 Metal Gear Digital Servos. I'm not, I wouldn't do that. Me personally, I'm going to pull it out of the I've box. I've never, yeah, I've never had an issue with the servos. No. About the, yeah. Now, yeah. granted, they aren't the best servos. I'll admit that, and I, I would love to see a lot of these. And, again, it, it's a cost thing, and they're trying to keep costs down, and I totally understand it, but I would a lot of times like to see a little bit better servos and a lot of this stuff because, like he mentioned, too, if you fly that plane and you fly it hard and you fly it a lot, these these servos, you know, the cheap plastic geared servos, they do wear out, and they don't like the center uh, after a while. So I get it. You know, I understand it. Um, but the one thing that did surprise me, Andre, is he took the new rubber type uh, tires right off and threw them right in the trash and went right back to the the foam tires. So eighty grams of weight, man. Eighty grams. That like is a 40 lot per tire. That is a lot when you're trying to keep the plane sporty. Uh, yeah, and I, I kind of agree with that. So yeah, it's. Uh, I like the nose cone though. Putting a nose cone on it made it look a little sharper. But then you're not getting the airflow into the nose. I think. Mm -hmm. Or well, it's still there. But I agree. I like the. I'm, I'm just looking for the ARF kit here. I like the orange and ARF. Uh, if I ever had to change mine up, I would switch to that color. But yeah, mm -hmm. interesting on fires. But and it's funny because we get that we get that uh, question all the time, uh, mm -hmm. you know. And they're like, "Why, uh, you know, why are you going with this? Why are you going with that?" Da, 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 da. And it's you know, I've never had. I've got those tires on on my my Tundra, and I've had them for years. I've flown off pavement. I've flown off asphalt. Or same thing, a gravel. <laughs> and I'm pulled, and most of the time it's off grass. And I kind of go, "How long are you on the ground?" Mm -hmm. You know, that's like, a good point. I'm like, it, you know, it's like, look, it's, this plane takes off. I spend such little time in the on the ground, on the ground when I when I'm ready to go with this thing. Yeah, and you know, we did have that big discussion with um, Stuart when we talked about the Tundra. We we're like, why did why did you go with the you know the 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 EPO foam wheels? And he said, that's the first thing he said. You know, we tried a lot of other wheels, and we liked you know obviously they might not be the best choice, but for weight and performance and everything. This is why we chose what we did, and that's why when they brought out the other one, we were actually kind of surprised that they did the bush mule. Yeah, yeah. that they um, and then reverted back to the uh, the the rubber wheels, you know, being so heavy. But I don't know. I I haven't actually tried them, so I can't really say and and you know if they're better or not, or if the weight's a big thing. But I don't know. I, I still uh, thought it was interesting. He just took them right off and threw them in the trash. But in the garbage. I'm like, oh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna assume he keeps them 
puts them in a bin somewhere and waits and doesn't leave them in the trash because that's so sad. <laughs> yeah, right. I totally agree. Uh, it, it's funny because I look at my tundra and I'm like, yeah, it's starting to show its age, but it's a couple years old. And boy, we've I've flown that thing, yeah. and I beat it hard. It's been it's it's gone to Ohio a few times, mm-hmm. and you know it's uh. But and uh, at least I actually I'm 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 happy to know that there is a power plant, so there's a fuselage that I can do a swap to. Yes. Uh, if I do stuff down the road, so um, if I ever do a V2, mm-hmm. I'm certainly cutting in nav lights when I do it. I'm gonna cut the I'll, I'll you know get my Exacto knife out and I'll put my nav lights into because I, I feel that's like the one thing this airplane is missing, just some flashing lights because I really like them on the Grand Tundra and the uh, and the Bush Mule. Yeah, and you know when it first came out, I was gonna say no, I didn't care about the lights, but then when Mike ended up with the timber and flying that thing in the evenings with the lights all over. I'll never forget that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll never forget it that. It is day. absolutely phenomenal. That day was special for sure to see that plane on that lake like that. Yeah, or the even video we did. There you go. Or even the yeah, uh Fury Field. Yes. Yeah, the ultra micro timber with the, the lights, you know. It that does make a difference. I I'll have to agree. I, I it should is own much one better. of those, I think. Yeah, I agree with you. you I should, should get that the, that micro and then the micro F4F probably. Yeah, that would be In cool too. I don't wait for it to go on sale. You know, we haven't even bought another Wildcat either. That's terrible. I need a shelf queen. I know, <laughs> terrible. All right, so uh, anybody that's got a beat up Tundra, you want to go to you know replace it. Uh, they have the ARF kits out there now for you, so you can make it look all spiffy and get a nice shiny color and get some different wheels. So go check it out. It's available now. Uh, one other thing I want to, uh, hang on, I'm reading some comments. Where are all the World War I era planes? Very few out there now, considering a balsa kit from Bill. You know, Bill, we talked about that a, a few podcasts ago, and I can't remember. I don't know. Someone if, was alluding to that. Yeah, was it Steve was alluding to that? And I think also when we talked, way back when we talked to um, our buddy at Horizon, uh, Oh my gosh, I'm losing Matt. Matt, Matt. that uh, down the road here, there could be some more World War I planes coming down soon. And again, you know, that takes over a year. So I think we're going to see some. And the way Steve was was hinting around from Hobby King, uh, I think we may see something coming around the corner. But I agree. I miss the uh, World War I planes. They, they, they're amazing looking in the air. So, yeah, I've got my SC and my Ultras, and I'm terrified to fly them because yeah. it's like if I I can't find parts. Yes. You know? Yes. Uh, okay. Time to re-release the t- the Albatross. Yep, I agree. Fred's comments. So. And uh, that's very possible that that you know that's something down the road. You know, re-release it. The AS3 goes in, AS3X goes in it like they've been doing, and boom, we got another. You know. Um. Okay, real quick. I'm not going to uh, drag this out too much, but everybody knows. I do watch a lot of Casey Neistat videos. Ugh, you're killing me. I don't watch them all the time, but I no, every I now and it. again I, I, I stumble through. And again, only only because I like some of his editing, the way he does things. So I just look for stuff he does. I don't know. Maybe Andre probably thinks it's boring because that's what he does for a living. Um, but I find it interesting on on some of the stuff on how he edits and what he does. So a while back, I watched a video and I had to laugh, Andre. And what it was? Oh yeah, you were talking. Um, if anybody watches Casey's videos, uh, you'll know he does a lot of work with Drone Works, which is a big company out of Texas. If you've seen him uh, last year on his Christmas video where he flew uh, hanging off of a drone, uh, they picked him up in another Christmas video a, a year later for when he did uh, like Santa for all the kids. Uh, and here recently in the springtime, uh, he was surfing behind a drone, on, I think, on the Hudson River. So he does a lot of, of stuff with the, the Drone Works company. So I, I thought it was kind of funny. They posted a video a while back. Uh, he's got a newer company called 368 or whatever. And he says, I would like to showcase my office space and what we're doing and everything, and, and but I want drone footage. Well, obviously, they can't really fly a full-size drone you know in and around through there so what they surprised he didn't knowing him so what they did mike is they took a torrent completely stripped it down to bare bones got a gopro completely stripped the gopro down for just the guts 
and uh, look like they almost like hot glued the the GoPro guts on the torrent. But it already has a camera on it, right? FPV. Well, they had they left the FPV camera on. But it. They wanted the footage. They the wanted GoPro. some good footage, yeah. so they stripped the camera completely down, and it was a pretty good video. And again, Casey's got some good editing skills in the way he puts things together. But basically, Mike, they took that thing and flew it around his office. They they flew it out the window and went down and went through a couple doors, and he's like this. It was just funny because everybody thought it was just absolutely the best, most amazing video, <laughs> you know, put out there. And, it, you know, this is one of a kind or whatever. I was just watching the whole thing laughing my, my butt off because how many times have we taken, like, the Inductrix Plus or whatever, flown through the house or around, you know, in we've flown at Wayne's Church. And it's something, you know, a lot of people have been doing for years. But I just had to laugh because they he thought he was innovative. Yeah, right? it was like, oh, my gosh, this is the most. Yeah, he doesn't come off as the brightest person. Uh, amazing <laughs> video either. But I, I will give the drone work some credit that they took a torrent. And even that would be pretty tough, Andre, to fly in a tight space because you've flown that. It's a pretty, you know. It's got some movement. Yes. Know. Uh, but it was amazing that they, they, they got that thing completely stripped down to nothing and took a GoPro, took the, just the guts out of it, and got that torrent to fly right and flew it inside. Yeah. That was pretty cool. That part, you know, yeah. I But that's I really no different liked. than like some of the, some of the smaller quads, you know, the, the, the sub 100 millimeter quads and, and then putting a, a uh, run cam split. Same yes. thing, right? Yes. You know, so. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to throw that out there. I thought it was just kind of funny. And again, if any one of us put a video like that out, and I think if you if you look way way back in the um, RC After Hours Instagram, I think there's some videos on me flying. I had, <laughs> of course, nobody was home, and if anybody, I know we talked, but this was several years ago. I opened both doors of the house and I was doing yeah. circuits. I was going around the house, through the house, around the house, through the house, and posted some videos of it. And I was having a blast because I was just sitting in the house. But uh, so I know a lot of people have been doing stuff like sure. that for a, long a while time. now. But again, if we posted something like that, yeah, it I might get a hundred views. Yeah, Casey posts a video, and I think it's over a million or close to two million me. now for something. You know, maybe I have to do it in a Bigfoot. Suit I don't know. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Andre, you had one other thing before we get into some emails and shut this thing down. You wanted to talk about real quick. This is a little remote. It's uh, it's basically the same. It's a this one's a Force RC battle control transmitter, but mm -hmm. uh, John. Passed me this when I was in Ohio. That's an Nintendo it's 64 basic... controller. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but it's your basic, you know, ready to fly remote. Well, the other night, so uh, James has been really reluctant to fly because every time I tell him a remote, he's like, "It's too big. It doesn't mm -hmm. fit my hands." Well, these right, these ones are, you know, they're they're like a game controller. So last night I'm here, try this, and I dropped the little inductrix in front of him, you know. So it was, uh, you know, he, it's facing forward, so he's looking at the back. He Popped it up, left, right, up, down, round, around, land it. Yeah, I can control this. So I'm like, well, that's the difference, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. So, you know, it's if anybody's having, you know, their kids saying, I don't like the controls because they're just too big in my hands, this is going to probably be the way to go. Plus, yeah, it looks like a, you know, I got my Xbox controller. Oh, yeah. You know, they, you know, they look the same. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, so thanks, John, on that one. But uh, I'm going to, Get him to fly. We'll set up the FPV on the TV or the or my little monitor. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like the goggles for his eyes for whatever. For, but I, I get that. And we're gonna go flying through the house later on awesome. with, with the inductrix. Ah, and yeah. then yeah, awesome. I'm gonna try him on the uh, the little Sport Cub S, little one S one, uh, which this should bind up with just fine. Mm -hmm. So. We'll have some fun, see how it works, and, and, and go from there. Uh, and I've been testing and flying a little bit more with that transmitter module that, uh, that Matt Warner passed me. And, uh, yeah, the well, I mean, FR Skies has got the little one. Turnergy has their little one, which I do want to test as well. But, yeah, eventually you just end up with too many uh, um, – too many receivers or transmitters in your but this is the key so if your kids like i said if your kids are are kind of um you know pushing back saying yeah it doesn't feel right try one of these but you need to you know, hook it's the got trigger. No... you need to hook up the trigger to a bomb drop that looks like it <laughs> well, should be a it's bomb it's funny drop. they make sounds they make they and on the inductrix you're switching between your modes right and it's like it's making gun sounds like oh <laughs> that's funny 
<laughs> there you go. Perfect. Oh, that's hilarious. You know, uh, I'm just switching the modes, right? Yeah, so I'm like, funny. okay, I get it. Yeah, I get it. That's good. And, and also, a lot of the Horizon smaller stuff uh, that ready to fly do come with controllers similar to that. I know for a fact. But it would yeah. be cool to see a couple of these companies or even Spectrum to make more of a a kid specific radio or something lighter and smaller that does fit in their hands a little bit better. That would be, you know, yeah. something that not be anything fancy, but just something like Andre said, that it fits them and they have better control and feel more comfortable with. I think that, that yeah. is it the Stratos had a controller like that. Very similar. To yeah. Before. Yeah. Type design. Yeah. It's that's been a while. Ago, yeah. But... That's why I say a lot of their smaller, cheaper stuff or the hobby zone stuff, the ready f- to fly controllers are almost identical to what Andre had. Um, yep. uh, okay. Uh, let's run through. I got a few emails. We're going to run through those real quick and then we're going to get out of here. So let me pull those up here real quick. <clears throat> do to do do to do. Uh, can't remember. My... Come on phone. Uh, we haven't read any emails for a while, but again, uh, if you want to hear crash stories, guys, you got to send them in. I'll be more than happy to collect a bunch of them, and we will read them on the air. I love listening to them. So if you don't know uh, RC After Hours email, it's rcafterhourspodcast at gmail.com. I know we haven't put that out there for quite a while. So if you have any good funny crash stories and you want us to read them on the air i'll get a bunch of them i'm more than happy to read them we haven't had a whole lot lately but rc after hours podcast at gmail.com you can send them in to us and we will definitely read them on the air first one i want to read is by ryan woodman uh he says chris andre and mike i've been a long time listener since day one actually of the flight test podcast i have had the love hate relationship with RC for approximately 12 years. I got Real Flight G3 when I turned 16 and practiced for years on and off without ever buying a plane. I did have a Blade CP and a Blade CX way back in the day. I actually still have them both, but I have never could afford anything else as I was only 16 years old. Fast forward to when I'm 22 and getting a real job. I wanted to buy something cheap to see if I would really be into the whole plane thing, so I bought a ready-to-fly micro edf f86 saber from great plains i don't know if that would be the first thing i would buy but you probably seen myself said yeah ready to fly it's a jet let's go for it (laughs) gotta have a jet right he says well my first attempt at flight lasted four seconds Hmm. (laughs) i gave her full throttle a little toss and it went straight up in the air did a graceful loop and proceeded to smash nose first into the ground whoops i plugged the ejected battery back in and tried it again this time it went much better until the landing i tried to aim for a small strip of grass between the bean field and the parking lot i ended up in the bean field plane was okay and i loved every minute of it now you have about now i have about 15 planes and don't have enough time to fly them My latest crash involved a little alcohol in a swimming pool. Uh Uh-oh, this does not sound good. I have a UMX timber with floats. Oh, I know where this is going. (laughs) And I I (laughs) I went to a friend's house with a decent size, who has a decent size swimming pool surrounded by large trees with about 200, are there about 200 feet in any direction? Winds were gusting at about 15 miles an hour, which is a lot. Je- yes, that's a lot for, for an all. UMX. Uh, yeah, UMX timber. I tend to wimp out and fly with less than five mile an hour only. The timber actually flew amazing, and taking off and landing from the pool was a lot of fun. I was feeling fearless. My friend wanted to get in the plane, so I had brought my re- ready to fly expert over. I had only flown this plane twice before. Twice before, I took off vertically and hovered it a bit. I was getting pushed around like crazy. I decided forward flight would be a lot better, so I flipped the switch to go into plane mode. After a few seconds, the plane got going away from me. I got really confused thanks to my friend Jim Beam. I, <laughs> I gave it some elevator up, which made it fly straight into the top of the tree. Whoops. I wandered around for a while, hoping it fell down, but no luck. I couldn't see see it in the tree either. 
Luckily, the next day, my friend went out and it was laying right next to the tree with somehow no damage. Battery had ejected itself, so the battery is in good shape and it didn't drain it down. It's very possible I simply missed it laying on the ground the night before, but that will remain a mystery. So that was uh, Ryan. I like the uh, first plane, micro, e micro EDF F86 Saber from Great Plains. Oh, geez, it was. That would be awesome. Oh. Uh, um, let's see. Oh, I wanted to mention, this is from Jason. They have a flying cub, or flying cub, flying club. Uh, it's called Holly Springs Skyhawks RC Group. And I think it's down in South Carolina, I believe. I got another email from them. Anyway, they're going to have a big flying event. I'm going to hang on a second. I'll see if I can find it. He wanted me to give him a little shout out. Here it is. Hi, guys. I enjoy listening to the podcast. I love what you guys are doing and promoting the hobby. Uh, I want to reach out and invite you guys and anybody else for their second annual flying event called Wings Over Springs to be held Saturday, September 1st. 2018 in Holly Springs, North Carolina. We are a young, dynamic park flyer club that was first chartered in the fall of 2015. Our annual event and charity fundraiser, Wings Over Springs Electric Fly-In, was a huge success last year with, with over 50 registered pilots. Proceeds from the event will benefit, benefit Meg Smile Foundation. Jeez, oh, whiz, I'm going to give up. Uh, they benefit the uh, Meg Smile Foundation and the Recreational Parks Department. We are raising money for charity sponsor donations for a pilot raffle and are greatly appreciated. Please let us know if there is any RCAH bling that you may be willing to donate. Last year we generated $400 from our sponsored charity. So if anybody's down around, in, around the Holly Springs area around September 1st, go check them out. Uh, let's see. Oh, here's a good one, Andre. This might be something we can get this gentleman on. This is from David Hill. And if anybody, it was several podcasts ago, we were talking about um, wildfires and tanker planes. And we were talking about somehow like maybe taking the bush mule or something and make it into a tanker plane. Let's see, you know, and we were talking about the way the water sloshes. Mm -hmm. We were trying That's to come up with something, yeah, to see how it would work. So... David Hill sent in a email, and he says, I was done listening to your podcast, and you guys had quite the la laugh about air tankers hauling water and sloshing about in the plane. As you probably understand, controlling the location of the weight in a plane is very important, and if you want to keep flying, yes, especially if it flows like water. When I was in college, I worked for the USDA Forest Service as a physical science technician in the operational retardant effectiveness program at the Inner Mountain Research Station located in Missoula, Montana. One of my jobs during the summer fire season was to fly in the back of a Cessna Skymaster with vid and IR cameras taking video of fire suppression efforts in California. If you are really interested in knowing more, I'm willing to come on the show and explain how it's done. I have in-depth knowledge of a DC-6 and, and DC-7 tankers and how they are configured to drop 3,000 gallons of retardant on a fire line. During my years of working there, we performed retardant drop, spreadsheet analysis, area coverage, corrosion testing, and even studied how ground fire spreads in the wind tunnel. I think you guys in your audience might appreciate that. Best regards, David. Cool. That'd be interesting, because <laughs> I'd like to know how they yeah. configure that stuff. Uh, so that was from David. Let's see. I think I had another crash story in here somewhere. Uh, okay, here we go. This one's from William Shatman, I believe is his name. Uh, it's not really a, a big crash story, but it was just a story I thought was rather interesting of what he did for his brother. He says, another tale from the brother who wouldn't share. One year after Operation Arrowbird Tree Climb, and I think that's from another crash story he sent in, he said, I joined the RC club at the Fremont Flyers. That fall, I started school in Warwick, Rhode Island at the New England Tech. To get a full 
college experience, I shared an apartment with a couple other students. On the weekends, they partied. He says, me, I drove two hours back to New Hampshire for laundry, free food, and of course flying. Each Sunday, I was getting good, but I had to fly more. So I grabbed my Hangar 9, 40 size nitro trainer, and threw it in my Jeep. Arriving at my apartment two hours later, my neighbor noticed that my airplane was when I was unloading it. Well, he was an RC pilot and knows a few parks to fly, and I thought, yes, somebody to fly with. Now, getting to the best of both worlds, I am in New Hampshire when a club member says he's got a 40 Habico trainer for sale. Well, my brother, Johnny, just joined the club and needed a plane. We bought it and planned to fly it that next Saturday. The plane was ready to go, except for it needed a flight battery. A week goes by, excited for my brother's maiden, that Friday night was routine. Packing up all the flight equipment and the plane, I was hoping to get in my Jeep and make the 100-mile hike back to New Hampshire. Now listen to this, Mike. Pulling into my driveway at 11.30 at night. Before I shut the car off, I realized I forgot something. I forgot the battery. Now, my brother needed one, and I left it in Rhode Island. He says, now what? Okay, I could let him use mine and watch him fly and be happy. No, 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 no. I want to fly too. I backed out of the driveway and went back. 1.30 a.m., I park in front of the apartment. I carefully open the door to my roommates as they were sleeping. I tiptoed into the kitchen, grabbed the pack off the shelf, on the road again. At this point, I'm so tired, I'm Uh. inverted. I missed my exit by one spot, went back, and it was an extra half hour. I finally made it back home at 4 a.m. in the morning. So, a few hours later, Johnny took off for his maiden flight. Later that day, I was making my final approach, thrown off balance, and spiraled down, crashing straight into the bed. Other than an electrician I told at work today, I never told this story to anyone, not even my brother. So he drove all the way uh, back to get that battery <laughs> and back the back home so him and his brother could fly together. That's crazy. Uh, that, but that is a good that, story. And to not even that, tell him. You, you know what I mean? have a hobby shop nearby where you could buy a battery? Pack? Well, when you're, who knows, maybe it was cheaper know. for the gas. Sunday and it was closed. Oh, who yeah, knows? that's yeah. true. Yeah, Four hours of driving round trip. Jeez. Uh, Oof. Yeah, at that hour, ugh. Wow. Yeah, I think that's all we. Have. I think the rest of the crash stories. Yeah, going through there, we've read the rest of them. So that's it for crash stories. That's so a cool story though. That is a cool story. That's why I wanted to uh, share. Anything else, Andre? Anything I missed that you wanted to add? Or something? No, I'm good, man. Good I'm good. Okay. All right, real quick, we're going to get out of here, read off the sponsors here real quick. Um, Again, thanks for all the Patreon people. Uh, Please, if you like the show, listen to the show, spread the word, help us out. Anything helps out. Please uh, keep the show going. Patreon.com slash RC After Hours. Anything helps us out. And you got, and again, you guys have been absolutely phenomenal. Um, so I really hope to make to the next podcast without being in a cast. Yeah, <laughs> some sort after today. You'll be fine, Mike. Yeah, yeah. I got I got a big rubber suit. We're gonna put you in. You'll be fine. Bubble wrap me. Bubble wrap. <laughs> and again, our uh, getfpv.com. They have really been helping out the show. Um, the discount codes have been working very well. You, uh, all our listeners have been fantastic with uh, giving get FPV business. But again, they are helping us out. They're also um, keeping the show going. So we really appreciate Thanks, if yes. you go to getfpv.com, buy some stuff. Go to getfpv.com and buy some stuff. They have anything drone and FPV related, whether you're just getting into it or you, you, you're you already into it and you need a new quadcopter or frames or motors or new goggles or, or need to learn batteries. Yeah, what uh, Go check learn. out their Lumineer batteries. I have been talking about it for months they're fantastic batteries uh competitively priced and we beat the daylights out of them here and we've had no issues with them whatsoever they're phenomenal batteries so go check out their lumineer batteries and if you go to get fpv.com spend 120 bucks that's very easy to do in this hobby very easy battery packs alone can get up there quick so go spend 120 dollars 
and put it in your cart and use our discount code RC After Hours. And if you do that, you will receive 10% off your entire order. And guess what, Mike? Once you do that and you spend your $120 and you use the RC After Hours code and you get that 10% discount and they ship it out in a couple days, it's going to be on your doorstep. So that is awesome. So go check out getfpv.com. They are absolutely the best for anything drone and FPV related. Same day, um, shipping, knowledgeable support staff. Uh, you can reach them by phone, email, Facebook, even video conference or FaceTime. They will help you out. They're number one shop uh, in the same day shipping. So there you have it. GetFPV.com. Go check them out. And I think that's all I got. Anything else from you, Mike? No. Nope. Anything? Um, you sure? Yeah. You look worried over there. You well, know, right? Buck Stamp says a Bigfoot outfit would provide padding on my bicycling, mountain biking today. <laughs> I got, I got, I got it in the closet. Oh, maybe we should put you in the big no, foot outfit. Horrible idea. Oh, horrible idea. Dude. He comes over the top, does the handle wheel. You know? Oh yeah. We oh, should yeah. maybe we yeah. should do. Oh, Mike, we God. could get rich. Your original Bigfoot has what forty million views. So now we put you on the bicycle and we film it. Look, it's Bigfoot on a bicycle. Oh, my wife. But he's got to steal the bike, right? So some kids. Yes. Yeah. So comes so out. my son will be over <laughs> peeing in the bushes. Bigfoot comes up and steals the bike and rides off. And rides off. Wheelie. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> There's our 40 million view yeah, idea. I don't think that's going to happen. Funny, uh, funny stuff. Uh, Fred want to know how long until tree stand time. Um, that starts at the end of September usually. Usually the last weekend of September. From the, I'm not, I didn't look at the regulations, but that's typical here oh, in okay. Ohio. So, in the September. All right. Right now I'm doing fall ball with the sun. So. Oh, gotcha. So... All right, guys. There you have it. We're done. We're out of here. Thanks for joining RC After Hours. Hope you had a good time hanging out with us. Thank you, everybody, uh, for hanging out on Facebook. We love chatting with you and interacting with you. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, backflip Bigfoot. Yeah, we could try. How about a backflip? Or one of Bigfoot? those stolen bikes where they're tied to a tree, and I go. Oh, yeah, <laughs> they're they're in the bars when it hits yeah. the end. <laughs> Uh, so all right thanks everybody for joining us we're out here uh we'll talk to you here in a couple weeks and see what we got going on and what guests we got coming hopefully we got a couple cool guests coming up so all right see you guys later bye bye guys